Dear Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name. We praise your holy name. We thank you, Father. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the days that you have chosen us to live, and we pray that we will live up to your greatest expectations. The words that were written before there was time, Proverbs uh, 139, verse 16. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. And, Father, we just just glorify in your, your awesomeness. We praise you, Lord, for everything that you have done for us. Let us look back on the past and be able to see how you have le- led us led us supernaturally through so many different times in our lives to bring us to the place that we are right now. Whether or not we're going through fiery trials or not, Father, we just thank you for those opportunities. We know that it's part of our molding and our shaping for the days that are ahead of us. We don't know how long those days will be ahead of us. And we know that we have to occupy and continue to shine the light of the Lord Jesus through praise, through worship, beholding your glory, Father God, and drawing ever closer to you on our knees before you, just praying for the, the loss of this world, racking up more and more rewards that you have admonished us to go after as we serve our Lord Jesus Christ and serve your throne. We praise your holy name, Lord God, and just thank you. Thank you for everything that we have to go through. Thank you for the trials. Thank you for the difficulties. Thank you for the, the hardships with our families, for the times when we're misunderstood. Uh, and just give us the supernatural peace, Lord God, that passes all understanding. We ask you more than anything for the Holy Spirit gift of faith, the Holy Spirit gift, especially in these times of discernment, and the Holy Spirit gift, Father God. Oh, hallelujah, of love. More than anything, Father God, we just praise you and we thank you for that Holy Spirit gift of over, overflowing and abundant love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, we clear the air. Principalities and power, spiritual host of wickedness and rulers of darkness and high places between any of us listening to this program right now, between our dwelling places in the throne room of God in the spiritual realm, we come against you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we command you in accordance with Colossians 2.15 to drop your weapons now. For Jesus Christ has disarmed principalities and powers, making a public spectacle of you. We bind you before the courts of heaven and we call down fire of God to burn you into agony. We have come to punish you before your time. Drop them. We declare the holy fire of God to shoot down from the glory pillar of the throne room of God and burn you into agony and cast you into the pit. We decree warrior angels, diamond tip sword, sharp as razor blades into the spiritual realm to cut you into pieces and to wage war with thee. In Jesus name, unclean spirits, we command you out of our house. Spirits of depression, spirits of doubt, we command you out. We declare the holy fire of God, a thorny hedge of protection around about us on all sides. Job 1, 9, Zechariah 2, 15. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. We pray that you will anoint us with your Holy Spirit, that you will pour out your supernatural peace, that you will help us to practice holiness and righteousness no matter what. No matter how many times the scripture says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, though he may fall, he will not be utterly cast down for the Lord. You, Father God, will uphold us with your hands. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for reaching down into the pits of disparity that we fall into sometimes. Sometimes we fall into a pit of self-pity. Sometimes we fall into a pit of just being miserable with still being here, but yet we have to see things through the eyes, through the eyes of those who reside in the throne and realize that all of the angels in heaven glorify and sing praise for one person who repents and turns away and stops sinning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we pray that you will help us to understand that every day is another opportunity for us to draw closer. Every day is another opportunity that we can bring one more person through our prayers, through our clean hands, before your throne. And we thank you for that opportunity, for we would not want one to perish, and we know what that means. We praise you, Father God, for helping us to understand the gruesome horror that awaits so many that do not receive you, the glory and the grace and the awesomeness and the mercy that you are so willing to bestow upon the lost of this world if we, the saints, would only get on our knees and pray. We thank you for leaders of the church like Charles Spurgeon, who have admonished us to know that for every man that gets on his knees in prayer, Satan himself shakes. 
in fear. And we pray in Jesus' name, Father God, and we claim that and we believe it. We want to believe it. We know that the authority is ours. We know that Jesus has paid the price. We know that we are victors as long as we are willing to continue to fight the battles that make up the war that is part of our lives on this earth when we are awakened and willing to step forward in obedience and do the things that have been commanded of us and written in our books before there was time. In Jesus' name, we pray that you will give your angels charge over us. We pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you will empower us. We thank you, Father God, that you will lift us up when we fall, that you will give us strength and renew it. Renew it because we've lost it. Isaiah 40, 30, 40, 40, 31. For those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Father, help us to mount up with wings of eagles, to run and not be weary, to walk and not faint. Help us to hear your still, small voice. Bring forth the days ahead of us, Father God. We know that the former rain has fallen, and we pray that the latter rain is about to fall at any time. Condition us. Sharpen us. Give us the strength. Embolden us, Father, and the patience and the hunger to be able to serve you in the capacity which you have determined and written about us. May we walk in those works to glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you, Father God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So to start out this show, I do. uh, The Lord placed it upon my heart to make a correction, not really a correction, but to clarify, Uh, because, you know, when you're when you get frustrated with the situation that's out there right now, and so many of us are, I'm receiving your emails and I'm feeling your I'm feeling your pain. I'm feeling your pain. We're talking about it a lot behind the scenes. Uh, my, myself, Brother Jeff Wirely, um, uh, Linda Hashi, uh, you know, uh, you know, others of us, Terry Hill, uh, you know, uh, and, and many, many more of us uh, that probably don't want to have their names mentioned on the program. But, but praise Jesus, uh, you know, I, you know, it, uh, it, we're 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 brokenhearted. I mean, really, we're brokenhearted because we really didn't see the fall of our brothers and sisters quite at the extent that we thought. A lot of the people that we brought on the shows, show over the years, and we pray, we pray, 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 pray like crazy. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we we're definitely uh, Luke 18, the persistent widow. Hallelujah. In every aspect of our walk and our lives and the things that we're beseeching the Father and the thing, you know, keep on seeking, keep on asking, keep on reverently knocking, and those things will be given unto you, and those things will keep on be given unto you. Praise Jesus, Kenneth Weist. Very important to have a copy of that to get it, get your uh, get the true transliterated Greek understanding of the New Testament. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, the clarification that the Lord wanted me to place uh, out there was when I made the comment about the Elijah list. It's not that we. It, it's not that there's anything. Look, here's the thing. Yes, we know that the seven mountain stuff is an inaccurate understanding of the end time stuff. It doesn't mean that they're not our brothers and sisters, and it doesn't mean that we don't love them with all of our heart. Yes, we grieve, but we're grieving. We grieve because it's a lost opportunity to awaken people to the days that we live in, even if the answer is D which I pray in Jesus' name that it's not. But if the answer is A, is, is you know, is all heck going to break loose and the big red lever going to get pulled and, and you know, uh, a holy mackerel and one of these deals and, you know, uh, tonight or, you know, tomorrow, I, you know, I would like to get on with it. But see, I don't have – hold on a second. I don't have the viewpoint of the throne room. You know, you don't have the viewpoint of the throne room, and people that I talk to, and you know who you are, you don't have the viewpoint of the throne room either. None of us do. And that viewpoint is a, – it's got to be a tremendously humbling viewpoint, and it's got to break our Father's heart. It's got to break Jesus' heart. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, we don't – when God says he doesn't want anyone to perish, nobody knows better than God what hell was created to be like, even before the foundations of the earth. Okay. Um, and, and for the, you know, so anyway, uh, uh, so the, to clarify, when I said that they would miss, uh, what I meant was not that they would miss salvation or any of that, or miss the opportunity to be part of the bride of Jesus Christ. That's not what I meant. What I meant was, and, and it was just the Lord, and the Holy Spirit to put this on my heart. Nobody sent me an email and said, I'm sending you a flamogram so that you can correct something. You said it, but no, no, I, I was, you know, re- reviewing in my spirit. Uh, and, 
and then and then I thought to myself, you know, no, you know, that could be easily misunderstood. So I want to clarify, miss the opportunity that has been laid before us to be able to witness the people to bring them to repentance before it's too late. If you're telling everybody that everything's okay, if you're telling everybody that uh, uh, you know Jesus has married America and everything's hunky dory, uh, you know, there's no forthcoming judgments. Uh, there are a bunch of doom and gloomers. You're doing all, you know, the seven mountain stuff has to ha- has to happen first. Never mind the Olivet discourse. Forget about the things that, and the crevasse and the melting of the Larsen B and Larsen C ice shelves and the and the, and the melting of the uh, of the glaciers and the rising of the seas and the and the volcanic activity that is unbelievably apocalyptic the floods that are taking place all over the world completely ignore that because that's a bunch of doom and gloom never mind what Jesus said in the Olivet discourse when you're doing that you're doing a disservice to the kingdom now then, it is because you're losing an opportunity to be able to awaken somebody to be prepared, whether that means physically prepared for some people who are not going to make the wise virgins and possibly be part of a, maybe a barley harvest. You know, Luke 21, 36 does say, pray always to be found worthy to escape all these things. Okay, uh, David Doetry, when he saw the blue streaks of light shooting up into the sky from his backyard at nighttime in Florida, which was for, you know, was the Lord showed him that that was the rapture, and of course, I believe that uh, the, the you know Project Blue Beam is is a double agent uh, thing where that guy Sergio, whatever his name was, Sergio, whatever his name from supposedly from NASA, um, I think that that's a double. I think I think that's satanic. I think that that is a uh, one of those things is called counterintelligence pro, pro that came from the devil originally to trick the people who are still on the earth that saw the blue streaks going up into heaven in the barley harvest, thinking that those were aliens that took them, which would be the perfect ploy of Satan, because all the people that are still on the earth that believe that they're walking in Christianity, that don't want, would never believe in a bazillion years that they were not you know, worthy to be found, you know, worthy to escape all these things that are about to come upon the earth, Luke 21, 36, and stand before the Son of Man. No, no Christian would, wants to believe that that could be possible. So naturally, if they're on the earth, and, 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 and Pastor Sori Park, the Korean pastor that was taken to heaven, he was shown by Jesus uh, that uh, that that um, uh, that NASA comes on the television, uh, all the televisions, and announces that it was the aliens that took them. Well, they couldn't do that today because they're denying the, the existence of aliens. So what does that tell you? It means that before anything like that can happen, there has to be some type of disclosure. Get it? So when you start to use a little critical thinking and you understand, well, okay, if Pastor Story Park saw that, David David Doetry saw that, Augusto Perez saw that, uh, you know, Bonnie from uh, you know uh, Australia, you know, from Bonds blog saw that then there was a you know the red the sky turned red across the entire world get your scope right get your scope right it's not just america across the entire world uh, 24 hours before the meteor strikes into the in the in, into the, into the, into the atlantic off the coast of puerto rico but, you know it, when you put it all together you should be able to to draw out some type of a storyline some type of an order of events all right, praise God. And this is very important because right now we got bazillions of people out there that are seeing little pieces of the puzzle. And this is good because we all woke up with a small piece of the puzzle. And I still, to this day, I get emails from very long term listeners of the program that have listened for, I mean, my goodness gracious, like nearly 10 years in some cases. And they would email me and, and I would be, well, well, sister, you know that such and such doesn't happen until such and such. And they, and they would say to me, well, I don't know, maybe it's just, you know, my, my old age or I've been in retirement too long, but I just can't keep track of it all. And it kind of makes me sad. And then, but I understand that. I do. I do. And, and I thank Jesus that he has given me whatever it is he's given me. I don't know what it is. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's a blessing or a smack upside the head sometimes. Praise God. A bag over the head punch in the face, as we like to say, uh, you know, behind the scenes of the program. Praise Jesus, right? Ow! Thank you, Jesus, for another one. Let me have another one, Jesus. Ow! Okay, anyway, so... You know, but we got it. We, we, you know, hopefully we can eventually get our arms around the concepts. I would, I'm, I made myself a note, but it just seems to never happen because we're so blessed with so many different guests that, um, uh, uh, you know. But I've made myself a note to try to set aside some time for for specialty shows. Now, it's ironic that I made that note 
just before the gigantic Hoover Dam of my job broke loose. I mean, it's unbelievable. Uh, my boss's 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 boss, director level of this, that, and the other thing, calls me up on the phone, blah, 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 this, that, and the other thing, and all of a sudden I have a swarm of managers and senior managers coming after me to, oh, we need you to do this, we need you to do that. I mean, it was like everybody was in a coma for the last six weeks, and all of a sudden, bam, the dam broke, and now everybody needs me to do like, oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. So we just keep on praising the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. Praise his name. And that's what we did. We just got to keep on praising. We cannot let us get it down. We got to trust God. There was a time. Oh, man. There was a time when I would get rained on, when things would start, you know, and the, the heavens would break forth and a, and a thunderbolt would shoot down and my job would start dumping stuff on me and I'd have to travel here and travel there. And I was like, oh, no. And I'd fall to my knees. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Please don't let anything happen to the radio. Don't let me miss a radio. Pro-. And the Lord just placed it upon my heart. Cool out. Cool out. You know, we need to get to the place. And this is me. I'm raising my hand. Physician, heal thyself. If you, if the physician is sick, the physician can't heal nobody else, right? Amen? And, and sometimes the physician has to get sick to be able to make recommendations for certain types of medicine. Excuse me, those bubblies get to you after a while. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hallelujah. And don't be surprised, surprised, surprised. Surprise, surprise. If one of them sneak in on me. All right, praise Jesus. But <laughs> anyway, um, uh, you know, but we, but you know, uh, I used to get so upset. And then it was like, I, and I was having a conversation with Jonathan Clegg, and He's like, Johnny, what are you getting upset about? Are you praying? Are you talking to the Lord? Of course, I, my answer was like, you know, of course, you know. And, um, and he's like, well, then guess what? If it doesn't happen... Guess whose will it was? It was God's will. And, you know, I was like, I had one of those ah, moments, you know, and I was like, you know what? You're right. Because if you resist the devil, he must do what? Flee from you. But you have to have clean hands. You can't have any, you know, little sneaky side sins in there. Oh, the Lord will let me get away with this. The Lord understands that this is an addiction and I'm going to have to work my way through it. Well, yes, he does. Yes, he does. But it doesn't mean that you get a hall pass while you're dealing with the addiction. You still got it. When Jesus says he has nothing in me, he was talking about Satan. When, when 1 John 5, 9 says that, uh, that he who is born of God does not sin, he keeps himself. And, and, and he who is born of God keeps himself, and the evil one does not touch him. See, we got – and now that doesn't include the whole thorn in the flesh deal. So there's always an exception to the rule. And this drives theology crazy. They'll say, say things, well, you, you must be taking it out of context because – you know why? Because, brother, you just can't understand it, right? No. The problem is it's always all of the above. And again, if I go back to the, the original, uh, I don't know if you want to call it example, analogy, or whatever the case is, A, is it tonight, tomorrow, uh, a couple of months from now when the big red lever gets pulled? Or as Brother Jeff Byerly says, uh, when, you know, when the uh, kickoff event, I guess he really likes football a lot, so the Lord play, play, he placed the words kickoff into his heart. But anyway, um, uh, you know, uh, but I just call it the big red lever, but when the, when, when, and, 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 and Heidi Baker, Heidi Baker, I played, you, I played you that awesome, awesome audio clip of Heidi Baker. Amen? I mean, where she even saw not only the suddenlies, that's what God told her they were, the suddenlies. That's why all these rich people and well-dressed people and cars and Mercedes and and all this stuff were standing in line for food and water because they weren't prepared. He didn't see it coming. See? And and, so is it A, a couple of months from now? Is it B, a couple of years from now? Is it C, holy Holy moly, I better start my 401k up again. We don't know if it's A, B, or C, and we don't know if it's all of the above. And you're like, Johnny, what are you talking about? Have you been dipping into the, you know, uh, the uh, sacramental wine a little bit there, boy? How can it be A, B, and C, E, G, all of the above, if we're talking about a time frame? Well, guess what? What we don't know is we don't know how long. Look, yes, we do have prophecies and dreams and visions, many of them that, that say things like, well, uh, you, know, uh, the, you know, these things will happen so quickly that you will barely be able to catch your breath between these events. 
Well, guess what? That doesn't add up in, in our economy of time because God's economy of time never adds up in our economy of time. We're ruined by Burger King. We think we're going to drive through the window and they're just going to toss out eight hamburgers, eight fries, and the kids are all going to go, yay, hamburgers and fries. Thanks, Dad. And that is not how the kingdom works. And anybody who's been listening to this show since 2011 knows doggone well that's right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we have to be – We have, so if it is, if, if the big red lever gets pulled – I was just having this conversation with Brother Jeff Briarly today. If that big red lever does get pulled, that doesn't mean that we don't have several months between the next event. See, because in God's economy of time, uh, things happening so fast that we can barely catch our breath between the events could be months. Heaven forbid if it's longer than that. Then you would have an A, B, and C situation. It would be once again all of the above. And then it could drag on for however long. And, we, and we're all going to be sitting and looking at each other, our eyes red and going, oh, my gosh, when's the Cascadia subduction zone going to go, you know, break loose? When's the gigantic uh, Pacific Northwest earthquake that everybody prophesied and saw in their visions going to happen? When is it going to happen? We don't know. That's the problem. We don't. Wait a minute. Oh, my gosh. Up. Up. Yeah. Ah. The problem is, it could be, answer D, all of the above. It could be that our perception is Burger King. Where's my hamburger? What do you mean it's going to take 20 minutes? <laughs> There's 15 cars behind me beeping. <laughs> I used to work at Wendy's. They wanted me to go into management. Uh, I was only like 19 years old or whatever. I was in college at the time. And um, yeah, they were like, oh, they tried really hard to recruit me into management because, you know, I was high speed. I could flip a burger like nobody's business, man. And they had breakfast back then, and everybody loved my breakfast. When somebody came up to me and said, I'd like my scrambled eggs gently folded, I knew what that meant. And I cooked them just like they wanted them. And there were lines of people. There was like little old ladies going, where's the beef? Where's the beef? And I'd say, I'll show you where the beef is. And I'd flip her out a big bad burger. And she, you know, beef, and I was, but I, you know, I took it very seriously. They tried to recruit me. They surely did. That was back when they actually had what was called chili meat at Willie's or, or, or at Wendy's. Uh, but then they got into financial trouble, uh, and uh, guess what? Now they serve what they co- used to call chili meat. What is chili meat? Well, here, I'll turn you on to some insider Wendy's information. Turns out that chili meat is that the rule used to be, back when Wendy's was in their peak and their prime, they could not serve a burger if the meat had any so- sign of browning on it okay so if so you had to flip the burger and cook it in its juices it was always fresh that was a true story it was never frozen absolutely a fact and it, and it went through these big machines that would make those funky square patties every morning and then and then we'd come out and we'd throw them on the, and he had that he had to cook in their own juices and some people go well, it was a grease no it was a grease it was a ju- <laughs> roses or juices because i'm trained by wendy's and i'm told i you know i know what i'm supposed to say but anyway so, but you cook it in the juices and you would flip it several times and you would stage them out and you'd roll them across and you had you salted your grill and you knew how to do it and but boy let me tell you what the first sign I mean the first sign of any browning on any patty. You'd get fired. You would they would write you up if you served that on a burger. You could not. It became instantly chili meat, and you would grab it off the grill, stack, 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 five, six of them high, and you'd dump it over into this other bin that would get chopped up later and made into chili for the next day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So there's your Wendy's, original Wendy's secret of the day. All right, praise God. But anyway, um, but yes, yes, um, it's all of the above. What if it is all of the above? We don't know if it's going to be all of the above. We just don't know, but usually it turns out that it is. And what we do know... And again, I don't have it memorized, but it's like Isaiah 55, 8 or something like that. I don't know. Look it up yourself. But it's basically, you know, as high as the heavens are above the earth. So, you know, um, uh, uh, my ways are not your ways. My, uh, and your thoughts are not my thoughts. You know that? I mean, that is so, re- I mean, that is so like, I don't know, sobering, right? And then when we apply it, you know, using applied Christianity to our actual walk, 
to realize that this radio show has been out there for 10 years. And if you add all the years that I put into research, going on to other radio shows, writing over 420 articles, the stuff that people are getting all whacked out and excited about right now, which is a, which is a blessing, by the way. It's a blessing. We have to humble up. We've got to somehow remember, as we're dealing with our fiery trials that are to try you. Okay, don't forget your scripture of the day. Here's your, here's your other scripture of the day. First Peter 4.12. Commit it to memory. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Then it, look, look, check it out. Check it out. So check it out. I'm, you know, I, uh, I was having a conversation with another sister earlier today, and she was like, well, the Lord will give you, give you the um, – you know, if you do such and such, whatever. She, she quoted uh, a scripture. I don't know if it was uh, Psalms or Proverbs. I forget. But he will give you the um, – uh, I think it was Proverbs, whatever. Maybe Psalms. But anyway, he, he, uh, he will give you the desires of your heart, okay? And I was like, well, how do you know that that's not an eternal promise? So we've got to remember to keep our eternal mindset on. Because how can you take that scripture and put it side by side with 1 Peter 4.12? Beloved, can, uh, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. It doesn't say maybe. <laughs> it doesn't say, um, well, if you're a naughty, naughty little Christian, it is, the, is to try you. Do you know what it says? This is a glory statement. This is a praise Jesus scripture. Beloved, don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial, which is going to try you as if some strange thing has happened to you. Well, what are you talking about? This can't be happening to me. <laughs> Well, surprise, surprise, surprise. Oh, yes, it can. <laughs> and yes, it probably will. And then, she, then you just got to get up and look at the devil straight in his eyes and say, Tell her she can kiss my grit. <laughs> I used to love that show, uh, Alice, you know, with Flo. Kiss my grits. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, but you got to be careful. You can't say kiss my grits to just anybody. They kind of got to get it. They got to be in on the joke. Now, that way, that way they get a giggle. They get to laugh. You can give them a little bit of joy in their lives. You can lift them up. When they realize they might be stuck here for a while, that Trump might get a second term. Heaven forbid. But, you know, whatever. Whatever. We all need to learn to have joy in our lives. We need to be able to deal. I need to be able to deal with them opening up the Hoover Dam or the Boulder Dam, depending on when you were born, and, you get, and, 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 and dumping stuff on my head, and then suddenly find out that all of a sudden i got to make a – not a one, not a two, not a three, not a four, but a five-hour fl plane flight all the way out to Portland, Oregon. <laughs> and by the way, with like zero warning at all. Thank you, Jesus. I keep everything packed up and ready to go just for you know, an occasion just like this. Hallelujah. All right, but anyway, um, uh, you know, so – we just got to know that we're going through fiery trials. We got to remember not to tempt God. Again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Don't do it. What does that mean? You complain. You say, oh, no, not me again, Lord. Not me again, Lord. This can't be happening to me. This can't be happening to me. Guess what? You're tempting God. You're limiting, the, you're limiting God. You're, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Pay attention to how they acted. And it's not talking about, you know, going out and, and finding, uh, you know, creating a brazen image of some kind of strange alien being from planet Pop-Tart and sitting it on your desk and going, ooga chaga, ooga, ooga, ooga chaga, ooga, ooga, ooga chaga. It's not what it's saying. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about they're complaining. That's why it took him 40 years to get across the desert. We don't want it to be 40 years for us, do we? I even have a sign. I put funny signs in my hallway. I like to laugh. And I, I need to laugh. We all need to laugh. And, and, I, and I have these funny signs that I put in my hallway. I love those tin signs. And I, I get this, you know, because I've you know, got a little two-story. And there's stairs that go down. And, you know, it makes a left turn and whatever. And I like to put these little signs up all over the place. I, I, got, I got all kinds of ones. And they're, they're hilarious. A lot of them are just hilarious. Like one of them was like, I would, you know, um, don't bother to tell me about your diet. Just go back in the corner and eat your salad and be sad. I love that one. That one cracks me up. How about you, kids? <laughs> Just go back into the corner, eat your salad, and be sad. Don't bother to tell me about your diet. Uh, there's another one that says, uh, uh, says uh, oh, man, it's the one. It's, it's about, um, um, uh, oh, yeah, that which doesn't kill you uh, will make you stronger. Except bears. Bears will kill you. <laughs> what do you think, kids? <laughs> All right. 
And one of the signs has a picture of two Hasidim, two uh, uh, you know, Orthodox Jews standing side by side, uh, men standing side by side, you know, with the long beards and everything. Uh, and, and, the, and the taller one is leaning over to the shorter one, and he's saying, he's kind of whispering into his ears, he's saying, brother, brother, don't you know that if you complain, God will make you stay on earth? You know, it doesn't say earth, but, it, but God will make you live longer. I get it, kids. <laughs> and guess what? Guess what? There's a lot of truth to that. Look how long the, the Israelites were in the desert. There's a lot of wisdom to that. So the trials and tribulations and the opportunities and the mercy of God, God's mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Well, guess what part of his mercy is? Part of his mercy is to let us keep on taking the test over and over and over again, over and over and over again, over and again, over and again. Guess what? You don't leave your freshman class until you pass the test. That's how it goes, and that's what happened to the Israelites. No, we're not going to tell nobody they can kiss anybody's grits. We got to take it up past the test. That's what we got to do. And that's hard. So don't be all flipped out and weirded out and bummed out and depressed and, and oh no, it can't be happening to me. This can't be happening to me. Is that some strange thing has happened to you? But rejoice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Rejoice to the extent that you partake in Christ's sufferings. And you're like, well, well, wait a minute. How do I even know that this is Christ's sufferings? Are you praying? Are you praying spiritual warfare prayers? Are you on your knees praying for the lost? Or are you sitting around doing a whole lot of nothing? Because if you are praying, especially if you're using spiritual warfare prayers and praying for the lost, you are bearing fruit. No, maybe you're not sitting out there on the street corner with a 50-watt megaphone uh, shouting Bible verses to each other, but you're probably bearing a lot more fruit with your prayers and your spiritual warfare prayers, than the person with the megaphone. No, you say. Yes, I say. How many people actually listen to the people with the megaphones in the first place? What, one out of 500? Most of them walk away going, boy, that guy ought to be placed under arrest. I hope he has a permit. They're dialing 911. Shut up! Sometimes a little bit of wisdom and understanding the power that was given to us, the authority that was given to us, Luke 10, verse 19, is much more effective in bearing fruit if we have the faith, and if we do have the faith, we are on our knees praying. We are taking advantage of this opportunity that God gave us. But you know what? But, but you know what? If we're dorking up, God's going to be merciful, and he's going to let you take the test again and again and again and again and again and again. What does that mean? You're not going to have a breakthrough. Until we can get to the place that the Israelites should have been at, well, you know, I don't know. I, I, can't, I can't put my – I mean, I was never stuck in the desert. I can only imagine how awful that was. Okay, but just – we just have to try to imagine with our sanctified imaginations how miserable that was and understand that God wanted them to praise him anyway. That's tough. That's real hard. And in the days to come, oh boy. And if that is used as the plumb line, if that is used as the measuring stick to be chosen as part of the bride, many are called, few are chosen. Can you imagine how many of us might fail? I'm raising my hand. I thank Jesus for the four, almost four-day, three-plus day, three-and-a-half, three-point-seven-five day power outage that I had to deal with with Hurricane Irma. And the giant palm tree, that, I don't know, for those of you who may have been listening to the show at the time, we had Jose on the show. We were doing a live show as Hurricane Irma was bearing down on Tampa, and, and, and a doggone gigantic palm tree, it was like 40, 50, it had to be 50 feet tall, got broke clean in half at the base and fell on my house, and it hit right above my head. And I was live on the air, and the whole house went boom. I mean, it was like, and I was like, I, I had my headphones on, so I didn't actually hear the crash, but I felt the vibration of the upper, upper level of the house vibrating, boom, 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 and I was like, what was that? I was live on the air. I was like, what was that? I didn't even discover it until like four days later. An angel of God had evidently been out there and pushed that thing into my ham radio antenna, and that huge tree hit dead on. My vertical. Now, it would have been such a miracle if it had hit, and hit for those of you who understand amateur radio, uh, there would, it wouldn't have been so, so much of a miracle if it had hit a Yagi. 
you know, uh, uh, multi-band, multi-element, horizontal phased, uh, you know, Yagi antenna. Okay, because they're pretty big and they have a big turning radius. This was a vertical. The odds of that tree hitting that vertical in such a manner that it actually hit directly on the pole, the supporting pole structure of the tower, such that that pole, and these poles are very, very strong. They are designed to have wind tolerance at 40 feet in the air, a wind tolerance is of like 130 miles per hour. These are some strong, and that's just the, at 130, they just bend slightly. This thing was bent into the shape of an L. To this day, that antenna is bent over, and Reverend Tracy Shulman's uh, husband is doing some renovations on my house, and he even said that he might be able to get that thing straightened out. As a matter of fact, he sounded pretty positive about it, which would be kind of cool because it was a doggone expensive antenna, and I haven't been able to use my uh, my amateur radio antenna. And everybody's like, you know, oh, cool, he has a ham radio. Uh, you know, when when when, does, when, the, when the nuclear bombs go off and everything, he'll be able to, like, you know, call somebody, and, and you know, he, he better have, like, a Faraday cage put over that thing, you know, for, for when the nukes go off, right? Right? You know what cracks me up? You know what really cracks me up is all the folks out there that would think that immediately. I never thought that. I never thought ever about putting a Faraday cage around my amateur radio equipment to protect it from an EMP. You know, you want to know why? Because if an EMP hits you, ain't going to have nobody to talk to anyways. I mean, you know what I'm saying? For crying out loud, people don't think about these things. Surprise, surprise, surprise. You know, I can see me right now. CQ, 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 DX. CQ, 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 DX. All I'm going to be doing is giving away my, my location so our good buddies, the New World Order, can come in and pick me up. Now, granted, that might be an advantage to somebody like me, but uh, this is the only sound I can expect to hear after CQ. Right, kids? <laughs> I was like, you know, oh, for crying out loud. People, critical thinking skills, please. Hey, wake up! There's not going to be anybody to talk to. Oh, but what about all the other amateur radio operators out there that did have Faraday cages? What, all six of them? Okay, maybe there's 500 of them. If you have any idea the likelihood or the lack of likelihood that you're going to get any kind of a signal out over the airwaves uh, that, 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 that HF propagation is going to work on the F layer and you're going to get any skip that you need to have to get any distance on your radio signal after a nuclear event, please? Come on. I mean, please, 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 please. The odds of you getting a hold of anybody, unless they're like standing in your front yard <laughs> like, and hearing you outside the window, is uh, pretty darn nil. <laughs> but people don't think about that. So they go out and get Faraday cages, and they put Faraday cages, and they recommend these people have engineering degrees. And they're like, yeah, put Faraday cages over your radio. Do this and do this. And I'm like, you know, who are you going to talk to? Ghostbusters? <laughs> right? No. Yeah. Anyway, and then whoever you are talking to, do you really want to be talking to them? What if the only ones that have working HF gear and two-meter gear is FEMA? What if it's just like in that scene in the TV series Jericho? where the FEMA trucks came up into the housing developments and took people away and marked the outsides of their houses with special insignia. Mm -hmm. See, we don't think about those things, do we? See, I'm a really big fan of apocalyptic movies, and they do. The people that make those apocalyptic movies do think about all those things. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And it helps to keep me sharp and thinking about those things myself. Uh, but anyway, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the difficult times that we are all going through. Not everybody. And that's all right, you know, because we're all in it, – it's all out of phase. We don't want things to be in phase because, you know, we have to cheer up those who fall. You know, we got we to gotta weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who, re who rejoice. 
Well, somebody's rejoicing and we're weeping. You know, we got to get together and let the rejoicers cause the weepers to rejoice too, or vice versa. We got to help each other out. If we were all in phase and all going, oh no, this is terrible, and we were, you know, just complaining and complaining, and we're all miserable at the same time. No, 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 no. So some of us are going through periods of blessings, and others of us are going through periods of testing. Okay, and some of us are going through maybe the middle ground or whatever the case is, but it's all out of phase on for a reason because the body of Christ is to love one another, to help one another, to seed and financially support and bless one another when we are in bad situations as best as we can. And 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 that and that's really what our calling is. Uh and to pray for the lost, to witness to the lost, to bind and cast out demons of darkness, to lay hands on the sick that they will recover, to believe the Bible, and to not sit on our hands waiting for some giant angel to show up in our bedroom and tell us what our calling is. Our calling is to read the Bible and be obedient to Jesus. It's not a difficult – well, it's kind of a hard calling. It is because narrow is the gate uh, – you know, narrow is the path and difficult is the way. The one question that I have for Jesus, and he knows it. I've had this conversation with him before, is why I, I just want to know the con, the what's the way to say this? How do I say this? When he says, you know, and I'm, I'm not quoting this exactly. This is totally paraphrased. But, you know, when he says, is, um, uh, co- you know, co- bring, br- come to me, you're, you're, bring to me your weary and your downtrodden, downtrodden or whatever, because my yoke is light and my, my, my burden is light and my yoke is, you know, that kind of thing. Because I want to ask Jesus, how does that's the one I'm still working on. I I love mystery scriptures. I love to put them side by side. And and when I put that one side by side with narrow is the path and difficult is the way that leads to life, and few shall find it. When I put those two side by side, I don't see harmony. I don't see synergy. Okay, I see a question mark. I'm like Lord Jesus. Help me to understand how your burden is light, yet difficult is a way. So we're going to have to wait and see, aren't we? And now, granted, now granted, it, you know, be, when the outpouring of the Holy Spirit falls upon the final harvest and the final harvesters, which I suspect will not happen until we go through at least a period of our desert period so that we can be tested to see if we tempt God and limit the Holy One of Israel. Because the foreshadowing of the Old Testament reveals that which is about to take place in our future. Yeah? Yeah. Uh-huh. Sorry for those of you who think that nothing bad will happen to the bride. I don't agree with you. I hope you're right. I'd love to skate on out of here uh, wearing bells. Praise Jesus. Uh, you know, but I just kind of think it, we're going to have to rough it for a little bit. I don't know how long. And we do know that Pastor Sori Park saw televisions with NASA people announcing it was the aliens. So we got to have disclosure, and there's going to be televisions that are working. So obviously, it's not in the middle of the sixth seal. And um, folks, just so you know, there's like – I'm just going to use this term because it's, it's undefinable. I'll use the term bunches. There's bunches and 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 bunches of people out there right now that are telling everybody about the three days of darkness. So we have another hyper cycle of three days of darkness. Three days of darkness. Johnny, you've got to listen to this video of three days of darkness. You've got to hear this woman. She's really annoyed. She's telling us all about the three days of darkness. And now you got to get to do three days of darkness and three days of darkness and three days of darkness and three days of darkness. And then and then we'll have another hyper cycle. It'll be about, uh, you know, uh, the meteor happening, or, or the meteor is going to fall. The meteor is going to fall. The meteor is going to fall tomorrow. The meteor is going to fall by September. The meteor is going to fall in October. The meteor, 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 meteor. Folks, anything that's going to have – this is just – I'm just going to leave it as an opinion. This is my opinion, but I believe this with all of my heart, and it does align 100%. With my research, biblical and biblically backed research, backed by prophecies, dreams, and visions in the hundreds, over 10 years of time, from a guy who slugs MCT coconut oil like it's a Pepsi on a 99-degree day. (laughs) Okay, I'm just kidding about that. I only have a, a, a tablespoon once every morning. But I'm just saying, think about it. See... Bottom line is, anything that is global, anything that's in the Bible, 
If it was important and if it's global in scope, if the impact of the event is global in scope, in other words, the whole earth is going to shake. All 240 countries are going to go. It's just going to be it's global in scope. It is like apocalyptic. You know, that's going to. Yes, Pastor Paul. Absolutely apocalyptic. OK. All right. See, are you yes. Yes. I'm absolutely serious. All right, now, if that be the case, which I'm sure it is, because in my studies and research, what I do is I look, I look at these things that people are prophesying in dreams and visions and things, and I'm like, well, that's got to be in the Bible, because that's a big event. That's really, really huge. That's humongous. That's global in scope. That's going to affect the whole world, just like disclosure will. Oh, yeah. And when the motherships arrive, it's going to be like the ABC miniseries, ABC miniseries V for visitors. Watch it on Netflix. I think it's free now on Netflix. V for visitors. Watch it. It's going to be like that. You watch. Mark my words. <laughs> you know, you can, you can send me an email. Call me. You know, uh, call me a false prophet like everybody else does. You know, whatever you want to do. I don't care. I just get me an extra wing on my, uh, I don't know, my pup tent in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just want to make it. I hope you do too. Narrow is the path and difficult is the way. What do we have ahead of us? How long is this going to last? How much testing do we have to suffer through? What does it mean when Jesus said, Luke 21, 36, pray always to be found worthy to escape all these things that are about to come upon the earth. All these things, all these things, all these things that are about to come upon the earth. And you know what I mean? All these things. Ow. You know what I'm saying? Why does it say all? Here, I'll tell you what. Let's do something fun. Let's see if the word all is actually there. Hmm. We'll, we'll do a Greek word study thing here. Okay, Luke 21, 36. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be found or may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Hmm. Okay. Well... Let's look at the Greek, shall we? Interlinear Bible, Greek. Up it pops. Waiting for it to materialize. Ah, here's the word. Strong's NT 3956. Let's see what it says. It says it's the word, the Greek word, pas. Quote, including all the forms of of declension, apparently a primary word, all, any, every, and the whole. The King James Strong's says all, manner of means, always, any, daily, every, ever, as many as, whatsoever, whole, whosoever, thoroughly. Okay, fair enough. Let's, let's see what else we have here. Let's go to a lexicon, shall we? Okay. No, nope. same stuff. Same stuff. It's all, all. It's all, 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 everywhere. All, 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 all. It's all. I guess it appears according to this particular lexicon 1,244 times in the New Testament. Wow. I don't know. A lot to see, huh? But what does that actually mean? Does it really mean all? What does all mean? All what things? Ah. Here's where it gets a little tricky, because it doesn't really define. The, the pre-trib rapture people would convince you. I used to be one of them. I know. And I was good at convincing people. They would convince you that all means all, and that's final. End of story. End of argument. Put up your dukes. 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 What was, what was that cartoon character on the Looney Tunes? You say, put them up. Put them up. Put up your dukes. It wasn't uh, It wasn't Foghorn Leghorn, was it? I don't know. I forget. I say, boy. I say, boy. Boy. I say, boy. Uh, put up your dukes. No, I forget. But anyway, so we don't know. That's the problem. We don't know what things. What things. We don't know. We just don't know. So we're going to have to wait. 
But I say prepare. I say prepare your heart. I say practice now. I say prepare yourself for the fiery trials which are to try you. And don't think anything strange is happening. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Because guess what? You get to pass go. You get, you, get, you get to collect your $200, and you do not have to go to jail. You get to go to the next, uh, the next test. <laughs> yep. So keep your eyes peeled and keep your face set like flint. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And on that note, uh, you know, uh, because tonight's show is going to be kind of cool, it's going to be kind of cool. This is like mind-blowing. Now, remember, just to kind of grease the rails a little bit, I think it's fair to mention that I had a conversation with Brother Zen, who I would argue is the world's leading expert, Zen Garcia, the world's leading expert on the Apocrypha and the Pseudo-Apocrypha. And the other writings of the other, uh, you know, uh, uh, groups of, uh, you know, um, civilizations and such across the world. And according to him, the Book of Jubilees makes it very clear. By the way, Jubilees was mentioned in the King James Bible by name, but still labeled as Apocrypha. What do you know? What a paradox. Scratch my head. Scratch my head. But according to Zen, they talked to the animals in Hebrew. They had a conversation with them. I think you're in for a real treat tonight. Praise God. I, I'm, I'm excited about it. I could go for some good heaven news. What about you? As long as we've got to be stuck here on this alien demon-infested rock, watching all this nonsense, this all the world's a stage, the William Guy Carr pawns in the game nonsense that's going on across the world, uh, shape-shifting reptilians, uh, Gwen Towers, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, my, my sister, 75 years old, is just now waking, waking up to MK Ultra. She's like sending everybody, uh, everybody in her list and warning them about MK Ultra. Oh, no! Well, guess what? Uh, you know... Pretty much every one of the things, and this isn't a boast, this is an admonition, this is a reminder. This is to keep us all, you know, nepho. That's the Greek word for sober, level headed, calm, full of joy. Because we're expecting to leave tomorrow, and then we don't leave, and then we're expecting to leave the next month, and we don't leave, and we listen to every Tom, Dick, and Harry out there, and Sally, and Frank, and Matilda, and and you know, and everybody, every good-meaning Christian out there that is positive that the Lord has shown them when the next rapture date is going to be. You're going to get depressed. Either that, or you're just you know, you're definitely not made of the same DNA as I am. That is for sure. You may be just one of those people that nothing bothers you. You can hear five billion predictions of the rapture, and you're just going to let it roll right off your shoulder and say, "Well, you know, it is what it is. K sera sera. Whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Uh, you know, whatever I say, this." <laughs> Sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. That's exactly how I feel. All right, but we don't all feel the same, and we're not all made of the same, you know, exact wiring. We don't all have the same exact wiring. I have people that I work with that, that it just blows my mind. One of them I said to him, dude, how in the world can you stay so cool under fire? Because there's nothing that rattles this guy. I mean, nothing that rattles this guy. And I was like, how do you do it? And then he told me the answer. For him, it was, you know, Afghanistan. For him, it was watching his friends get killed. For him, it was life and death. Do you suppose that it might be that way for us too? And do you suppose that it might also have eternal ramifications for those whom we could have saved. But instead, we did like Johnny Baptist and went like this. That's why right now we have to train, 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 train. And I'm not talking about choo-choo trains. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We have to... We have to be cognizant 
We have to understand that the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, faithfulness, uh, uh, you know, uh, some, one other one, goodness, and self-control. Self-control, hardest one of all. Bar none. Self-control, especially when you see really bad things happening. We got to be cool as a cucumber. We get so and and it, you know, but and I know a lot of us are counting, and I am counting on that outpouring of the Holy Spirit to keep us full of peace. Which, by the way, was shown to Sister Heidi Baker after the suddenlies occurred. So maybe that is the key to keep us from all flipping out. Because. I've never seen anybody die. I haven't. I've never seen anybody die. TV shows, yeah. But I've never seen anybody die in person. I don't know if I could handle it very well. Tell you what, if I was anywhere in their vicinity, the police would be hard-pressed to stop me from laying my hands on them and praying in Jesus' name that their soul goes into the hands of an angel immediately, and I would try to raise them from the dead even. And then they'd probably arrest me and take me to jail for crossing their little do-not-cross line. But I've never seen it. Last time I saw anything like that was I was four years old and my and I was it, now my my mom and my dad had passed away but I was living thousands of miles away and I wasn't there when it happened. And I was heartbreaking. It was horrible. But um but but yeah the last one that I actually was my was my grandma uh, and I didn't see her actually pass away but I remember when my dad told me to go up and to, he said because I was like I was a little kid I was like four years old I was like four I don't know four maybe five I think it was four and a half and I said I said she's not dead dad she's just sleeping. And my mom said, son, go up and lift up her hand. And I did. I, I lifted up her hand. Grandma. And I dropped it. Her hand fell flat down. And I started to cry. I miss my grandma. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when Psalms 91 is a reality? We are going to need that outpouring of the Holy Spirit, but I suspect, I suspect strongly that that Psalm 7841 is in the Bible for a reason. Again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. We cannot limit God. We cannot limit God. We cannot limit God. We cannot complain. And it could be, I don't know, I don't know, but it could be criteria to be chosen as part of the bride. And that, I wouldn't want that to happen. I, wouldn't, I don't want anybody to miss. This program has spent 10 years I've, to retribution, to reviling, to rebuking. We've had people listen to this program and completely have no concept of the wise and foolish virgins and call our guests, or, you know, email them and say, that Johnny Baptist, he's a heretic. He's telling everybody that they're going to go to hell because they had no concept of the bride of Jesus Christ. They had no understanding at all of the wise and foolish virgins. None. So what they heard me say to them, they didn't me measure up to the level of the bride. They were going to go to hell, and that is not what the Bible says. Thank you, Jesus, for the great tribulation. Thank you, Jesus, for the tribulation saints. Thank you, Jesus, for the elder darkness area, the shadowy area of heaven where the disobedient Christians will be cast into. Because it wasn't for that. And it would be true. Thank you, Jesus, for all these extra opportunities. You know, Francis Chan doesn't understand his, his Revelation timeline at all. I love him, but he doesn't. And he tells people when he goes on these live shows, he's like, you know, he talks, and he's right. It's very scary. And he tells people, you know what, when Jesus says that I vomit you, Laodiceans, out of my mouth, that doesn't sound like uh, welcome to heaven, good and faithful servant. His point being that he, he believes that they're getting sent to hell. Ah, but if we've been blessed to be chosen to be part of this group, I won't even say generation because I've already proven with the scriptures that the concept of a generation being 80 years is absolutely incorrect. Never mind there are babies born every three or four minutes or, or three or four seconds, I think. I don't even know what the number is. Just look it up on Wikipedia. There is no possible way to define a generation. Can't do it. 
because it's just common sense, common sense for crying out loud. But people still try to do it. Okay, and so, you know, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, First Peter 2, 9. Well, right there proves it. But who was that applicable to? Was it applicable to the people 2,000 years ago? That means that if they were a chosen generation, then they were plain part of, the, of our generation, too. That means that the generation spans 2,000 years. Biblically speaking, shame on us for using the Bible to discern what a generation to God in his economy of time is. Kind of puts a monkey wrench in the work of trying to define when this is going to happen or that's going to happen, because we don't know. Is it the appointed time? Is the appointed time a Hebrew date? Or is the appointed time when the fullness of the Gentiles has been called in? Oh, wow. That would make it a floating appointed time, a conditional point of time. But nobody thinks of that. It's got to be written somewhere in a book. It's got to be in a Hebrew calendar. There can be no kingdom dynamics. Really? God doesn't listen to the prayers of the saints. Moses didn't have the conversation on the mountaintop with the Lord about not killing the Israelites. Jonah wasn't told by the Father to go out and, and, and preach a damnation on, you know, and, and judgment upon Nineveh. And uh, the whole book of Jonah just rip it out. And that, that didn't happen. I mean, not, you know, God didn't stand in front of a pantheon of minor gods called spirits in 1 Kings 22, 19 and have a discussion with them about what he was going to do with King Ahab to make sure that he died at Ramoth Gilead. No, there's no kingdom dynamics. No, 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 no. Everything's written in stone. No, it's not. It's the opposite. The only thing that is constant is change. God doesn't change. God's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, so he never changes. The only thing that is constant is change. We are going to have our minds blown at that great whiteboard in the sky. I pray in Jesus' name that every single person, we have been dedicated, praise Jesus, thank you, Father, for 10 plus years to, on this program, thousands of radio shows, hundreds, if not thousands of guests, many of the shows over three hours long, uh, in my time, somewhere with show preparation and everything, 18 hours of my spare time, and you know, praise God for the opportunity to do this. I hope that it blessed some people. I know that it has. I've gotten emails, and thank you, Jesus, for that. But you know what? It's mostly been preparation for the bride, and God has confirmed time and time and time and time and time again very supernaturally, and through the voice of multiple prophets from multiple places and disciplines and diverse places, as Jesus would say, that, 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 that the things that we were predicting years and years ago were right. Not all of them. Don't forget Donnie and Marie in 2016. I love crow. Yummy, yummy crow. <laughs> That's right. I'm looking at you boys. <laughs> I'm getting kind of hungry. This uh, Atkins Phase 1 stuff seems to never go away for people who have my kind of job where, you know, going into ketosis is like, you know, solving world hunger. <laughs> oh, no. What a pun. I didn't mean that to be a punny. <laughs> very, very punny. Very, very punny. Anyway, on that note, let's go ahead and, uh, and, and well, under the circumstances, what do you say? Kids, are you ready? Okay, here we go, kids. It's been a while. All right, ready to get set? What kind of shoes do spies wear? What kind of shoes do spies wear? Kids? Kids? Spanky? Nothing from him. Sneakers! <laughs> spies, you know, sneakers. Oh, whew, cool. All right, we're, good. we're off to a good Zig Ziglar start. All right, kids. What did the hamburger name his daughter? Oh, this is great. What did the hamburger name his daughter? No, it wasn't Jenny O, and it wasn't a turkey burger. Get that, get that, get that egg and stuff out of your minds, kids. What did the hamburger name his daughter? Patty. <laughs> Patty. <laughs> kids. Hey, all right. Well, two, two out of three ain't bad. Let's see if we can go for three out of three. All right, kids. Here, here we go. Kids, what do scientists use to freshen their breath? This is a hard one. What the scientists use to freshen their breath? Experiments. <laughs> Experiments, <laughs> kids. What do you think, kids? Come on now. <laughs> what? Hey, no, no, no. I disagree. That was funny. That was doggone funny. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud, we're kids. Tell her she can kiss. Oh, <laughs> 
That's right, kids. Don't forget that. All right. <clears throat> All right. Oh, by the way, kids, don't use that at school. You'll go to the principal's office. And I've been there. I know what it's like. And it's not fun. Okay, because they call your mom, they humiliate you, and she's not happy to be there, and it's, you know, it's nothing like on TV. All right, anyway, all right, praise God. Uh, you know, who would think that anybody but like, 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 like a teacher at school or a principal could actually make your own parents, like, upset? You know, it'd be like, anyway. And then it was like 10,000 times worse for me because my dad was a supervisor of music for my school district. So he was like, you know, in senior management at the school. At the school. So when I got it, in trouble it was like you know yeah <laughs> not good <clears throat> anyway <clears throat> ah okay kids one more you got to give me one more shot no i'm gonna i'm gonna try two more with you kids because you're being you know like you are all right ready get set go all right what do you call a cow with a twitch what do you call a cow that has a twitch beef jerky <laughs> kids all right. Okay, I'm on a roll. I'm going for one more, one more. Kids, I had a hen. I had a hen, you know, like, you know, like a hen. I had a hen like this. I need to make sure the kids are hearing me right because I want to give them a chance to get this, this joke right. Okay, there you go, kids. Okay, kids. All right, kids. I had a hen. That could count her own eggs. What kind of chicken was she? What kind of chicken was she? She could count her own eggs. She was a mathema chicken. <laughs> Kids? Oh, for crying out loud. Okay, that does it. That does it. I'm not going to give you guys fourth and fifth chances anymore, I don't think. Anyway, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, so let's go ahead and move on into the prophecy section of the news. Uh, news, prophecy, news, prophecy, news and prophecy, prophecy, news, prophecy, news and, news and prophecy. Okay, here we go. Praise God. This is from Glinda Lomax uh, from a couple of months ago, uh, and the title of it is Assignments Against the Prophetic. Wow. My children, new assignments are being issued against my true prophets who are speaking my true words and preaching against sin on the earth. <laughs> what do you know? My true prophets are those who tell you of the coming destruction. Hallelujah. I desire that you would pray for them. Pray for their protection and fruitfulness in this time. Many of them are being called home soon as their work is done. They have suffered much, and I desire that they would not see the evil to come. Fewer will be required in what is coming, as most of the wicked will refuse to listen then as they do, as they do now, which is to refuse to listen. It says, pray for my prophets, my children. Pray for their protection, that they may complete their assignments in the earth. Pray for their fruitfulness. Pray they may receive all I have to speak to them in this time before their time is done. Father, more so than this, we pray in Jesus' name that you will reveal the error and the iniquity in the hearts of those who have said things at the end of a long ministry that they shouldn't have had said, said that could lead people to hellfire. Father, we pray that you will forgive them. Father, forgive them. And we also ask you, Lord, to wash away every word that they said into a deep blue sea of your forgetfulness and forgiveness on behalf of every person who heard those words. May the words of those like Sister Julia, who posted on the YouTube channel beneath one recently, Father, echo throughout all of eternity in the hearts of those who heard May they be forgotten and fall into the sands of the sea. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. Next up. Be 
because and I'm going to do more and more of this in the future because uh, as, um <clears throat> because um like we obviously if we have you know if we have enough gray matter you know if we were to open the top of our heads crack open our skull like a like a nut and scrape the inside of our brains or the inside of our our coconut shell heads with a shrimp fork and come up with enough gray matter to fit the inside of a hollow pea, then by now we should realize that our time isn't God's time. Okay, that being said, it's very, very fruitful indeed to go back and look at the prophecies that were spoken five years ago, six years ago, 70 years ago, and more even especially before the seducing spirits got released, and really dork things up. Praise God. All right, this goes back to 2013, again, from Wings of Prophecy. It says, quote, oh, and by the way, it's entitled, For This You Were Born. Folks, this is important. This is one of those prophecies that you want to embrace because it's encouraging. It's sad, too, but it's encouraging. It says, quote, for this you were born. I had been inquiring of the Lord about the time of increasing suicides. He told me is coming. This would this word during my prayer today was his answer. Quote, yes, many suicides are indeed coming in the future. For there is coming a time so bleak, so dark. It's not three days of darkness. It's just so dark. Many of you will not wish to live through it. Those who the hope of my son's name will not uh, – those who with uh, – I'm sorry, those without the hope of my son's name will not know how to go on, but my people shall through praise. It's through praise. That's the secret. They shall move forward in victory and determination on assignments from on high, for I myself self shall command them to their destinies. When all hope appears to be gone is when I do my greatest works and I require only your faith for these, my precious children. When this dark time arrives, look up, my children, for many great miracles are to take place before your very eyes. For this you were born. For this you have been prepared. Do not give up hope, as the unbelieving Gentiles do, for this is the very arrival of the time you have prayed for. Praise God. All right, glory to Jesus. And now, let's go into the news. Bunch of it. Got to read it fast. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention? It's not normal. It's just wrong. Uh, wrong. It's not normal. This is disturbing. Game over. CNN, U.S. pulls troops from Libya amidst a surge in violence. This is very, very important. You know why? The ceremony vision of 1979. She sees the first event. Doesn't mean it is the first event. It's the one that the Lord showed her as the first event. As a nuclear, nuclear-tipped missile of some kind launched from Libya by Iran into Israel. And that causes a whole span of nuclear events to occur across the world. Mm -hmm. So we keep our eyes on this. It goes on to say the United States military pulled a contingent of its troops from Libya. Wow. Pulling them out. Marine Corps. Out. Leave. Get out of there. Uh-oh. Listen to this. Headline. Canada's window to defend the Arctic is closing. A uh, member of parliament warns Russia has been expanding its military presence in the far north. And, oh, boy, they have. And, folks, please take a look. Load up like, you know, Google Earth. Look at the round, spherically shaped globe, which it is, and spin it and look at how short the distance is between Russia's nuclear missiles and bombers to America when they come over the North Pole. It's really short. It's like, you know, uh, like <laughs> – 
it's it's like it's like they start their engines and about the time they get warm they're there. <laughs> I mean, it's unreal. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. But most people don't realize that. All right, listen to this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Three black churches burned in 10 days. Now, what's really creepy about this, I watched this on the news, okay, um, uh, is that these, it, it appears to have been a tactical strike. And what do you mean? As opposed to random. And why? Because random would mean that they would just run from church to church and say, throw Molotov cocktails at this one and at this one and at this one and at this one. No, they were several miles apart. They were chosen churches. That's some scary stuff. That actually smacked of a pre-planned event, possibly a type of a false flag. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Here we go. The United States evacuates personnel from Libya due to increased unrest, according to a report. We already covered that, but we're going to keep on recording it. There's clarification. A contingent of U.S. forces supporting AFRICOM temporarily relocated from Libya in response to security conditions. Oh, boy. Get ready. Breaking Israel news. Did the Pope just evoke the prophetic alliance between Esau and Ishmael against uh, Jerusalem? And it goes on to explain their, you know, rationale behind this. I, I find it's really fascinating. I, look, you know what? I tip my hat to the folks at Breaking Israel news, you know, and, and, and all their quotes, uh, you know, from the Israel Bible, uh, you know, because you know what? If it catches the attention of one person who doesn't see Jesus as their Lord and Savior— Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And I hope they're right. All right, next headline. Kids without vaccines. Now it's okay to ban children and other people from public places for not having vaccines. And yes, uh, this uh, it says the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention reports that there have been 387 reported cases from January to March of this year, surpassing the total number of cases for 2018. It says one county in New York has taken an extremely unusual step to stem the outbreak in its community. Rockland County officials declared a state of emergency, stating that anyone under the age of 18 that was not vaccinated against measles would be banned from public places, including shopping centers, restaurants, schools, and places of worship. How are they going to enforce that, folks? Put on your thinking caps. Think Gestapo. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to go into the places of worship and inspect the children. And all they need is one brown shirt to launch a complaint. And folks, I'm here to tell you, I know a lot of people in traditional churchianity, and there's a lot of brown shirts in those churches. Look up the term brown shirt. Glory be to God, the sun, party poopers, anti-vaccination parents hold measles parties to give their kids the deadly virus so they become immune and don't need the MMR jab. Folks, it's going to get so bad. It's going to get so bad. Listen to this. Israel's Netanyahu wins election with uh, with a parliamentary major- majority, according to the tally. And there's still some debate over there, but I think he won it. And I think he's saying, hallelujah, it's set a, like a world record for Israel for a fifth term. Praise God. All right, listen to this. Even Saudi Arabia threatens to ditch the dollar for oil trade over United States bullying policies. They don't like us bugging at them, saying, well, you know, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. We gave you $130 billion and, you know, you kind of owe us and, you know, that kind of – well, you know. Anyway, but we are Babylon the Great. That's how we enforce Babylonian belief systems and, you know, become warmongers of the world all in the name of democracy. Let's go out and – you know what? You got to get – if you really want to understand – and I know, look, it, look, again, the only real Christians that came across from Europe were the Quakers, the Puritans. There were others, but they were conscientious objectors because they were true Christians. If you do your homework, you will discover how dark the establishment of America actually was. The Jacobians, the Illuminati, the Masons, very deeply embedded. Don't even get me going on Ben Franklin and all the dead baby bodies they pulled up. I used to be a really big Ben Franklin fan, but and then they, you know, uh, oh, my gosh. Anyway, praise God. All right, next headline. Praise Jesus. 40 knife offenses each day in London over two years. Shock figures show 40 knife offenses. 
two years of time. Another headline. Iran to equate America military with ISIS. If IRGC is included on the U.S. terror list, guess what? Too late. They already are, and they already are. All right, praise God. Listen to this. India greenlights purchase of more Russian T-90 battle tanks from Moscow. Folks, please, look at this. This is so far beyond setting up for a game of risk. This is like this is like having a game of risk with all the blue characters and all the red characters all over the world ready to start war, and then somebody says, you know what, I'm getting bored with this game, and they take a giant can of lighter fluid, sprinkle it on there, and throw a big lighter lit, and the whole thing goes... Because that's exactly where we are right now. The problem is it could last forever. This could go on forever. Well, not forever, but almost. It might seem like that to us because we're like special orders don't accept us. You know, um, uh, how does that go? Um, pickles and lettuce, <laughs> right? Secret sauce. <laughs> Okay, Pakistan's PM slams India's Modi uh, and Israel's Netanyahu as morally bankrupt. <laughs> right? Oh, boy. The whole world is just – all right, listen to this. Boise, Idaho residents sue the United States Air Force over proposed training above Idaho cities. They're getting sick and tired of all the helicopters and all the weirdness and all the bombs and all the things. They want some peace and quiet because they moved to Idaho to get away from all that. Sorry. All you folks that moved away to Idaho and all those nice, pretty, mountainous places out in the middle of nowhere, you think you're really getting away from it all? <laughs> you got another thing coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yemen's cholera outbreak kills over 300 people. Praise Jesus. Listen to this. Crimea asked the United States to stop spying after plane conducts reconnaissance, uh, reconnaissance missions multiple times in their region. All right, listen to this. Is America becoming godless? This headline, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, inquires. The number of people who have no religion has risen. Are you ready for this? 266%. 1 third of the population of America is now statistically according to the records godless wow gee that doesn't sound like the furry white butt kitty, kitty huggy white bunny prophets out there it doesn't sound like that sounds more like the olivet discourse what jesus said hmm Makes me scratch my head. Hmm. I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know, mate. Why, why it's so confusing, mate? Uh, Iran blames the United States for deadly floods, claiming the United States is using economic terrorism and economic warfare on the Islamic Republic. Could it be true? Hmm. At least 62 dead, tens of thousands of people displaced, almost 100,000 homes damaged or destroyed, 36 percent. That's a lot. 36 percent. That's like a third. Of Iran's roads are damaged after floods. Boy, study the Weimar Republic, folks. Study the Weimar Republic. It was devastation of the people, starvation. It was uh, it was uh, mega... Um, what they call hyperinflation, it was horrible. The Weimar Republic, that's what launched World War II. Mm. A lot of these things are starting to echo those events. Listen to this. Quote, headline, World Net Daily, Resolution Blast represent, uh, Representatives Polarizing Prayer Declaring Jesus as Nation's Only Hope That Every Knee Will Bow. I'm like, wow. Guess where that was? Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. That's from where I was born and raised. The city whose skyline never changes. <laughs> it doesn't. You could go there. You could go back to, to like the 1930s and look at the skyline of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania on the Susquehanna River and then come to look at it again today and put two pictures side by side. <laughs> There's no difference. It's the same. Anyway, praise God. CNN, mystery E. coli outbreak sickens 72 people in five states, according to the CDC. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to this. Thousands rally in Ma Mali to protect against ethnic violence. Another headline. CO2 levels at highest for 3 million years, where seas were 20 meters higher. That's uh, unbelievable. Duarte of the Philippines threatened suicide mission if Beijing oversteps in the South China Sea. Oh, my. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Cruisers and frigates and destroyers. Oh, my. Nah. Nah. Nothing's going to happen. Or is it? 
Philippines warships arrive in the Philippines amidst rising South China Sea tensions. More of that. United States atheist up in arms over in God we trust license plates. <laughs> Surprise, right? Climate change threatens 19 million Bangladeshi children, according to report. At least they said climate change. Which is a, a little hope for those of us who have been screaming, Planet X, two suns in the sky for crying out loud. Would you please wake up? Hey, wake up! Russia Today, China protests deployment of U.S. soldiers to guard Washington's embassy in Taiwan. Wow, wow. Are you kidding me? Folks, this is huge. <laughs> this is really, really huge. Another headline, the United States House of Representatives plans to sue Trump over national emergency declaration. No surprise there. We'll see what happens. Probably not much. Thousands evacuated after South Korea's wildfires. There are wildfires all over the place. I pulled up one of my emergency uh, reports that I get on my phone. It's constantly going off. Me, 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 me. You know, flooding here, flooding there, wildfires, this, that, and the other thing, cataclysmic, volcano erupting, crevasse on the earth, ice shelf breaking, uh, you know, Icelandic city under siege by water tsunami from a giant, you know, uh, and all this stuff. And you come across my phone, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, how come none of this is in the news? And I look at my phone, and I'm like, did you know that right in the middle of the United States of Babylon the Great, Within like, I don't know, an hour and a half drive, there's freezing blizzard-like temperatures and snow falling. And just south, by a couple of hours drive away, guess what? Wildfires. You know what? Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. But I don't remember ever seeing that happen before. But I'm kind of wacky. I tend to think everything's apocalyptic. Isn't that right, all you furry white kitten huggy bunny prophets out there? <laughs> Libya detained. Refugees. Terrified as clashes near Tripoli. Rage. The situation in Libya is bad. Keep your eyes peeled, folks. Russia today, no military solution. The United States demands immediate halt to, to Haftar's march on NATO ravaged capital of three gases. Mozambique? Donetsk? Moscow? No, it's Libya! Okay? Ding, 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 ding! Okay, Ohio 4-H adopts California LGBT element of E Q R S T U V. What is it? What the... Oh my gosh! What is it? Here's what it is. You know what I kind of wonder? I wonder how many of them actually are. I'm not saying they are. Some of them are just possessed by demons. But I wonder how many of them, because there's such a prolific, such a pronounced er, sur a surge of LGBT, LMNOP permutations out there across the entire world, I wonder to myself how many of them are alien-human hybrids or hubrids. Because they've been getting released into the public by the hundreds of thousands now for decades. People that have seen them say things like, they're beautiful, but what are they? Japan protest over planned Russian drills on Kuril Islands. Russian drills on the Kuril Islands. This is getting really, really interesting. American troops in Taiwan. Really, folks? Really? Trump threatening Russia and China, especially Russia, over Venezuela? When we have a history of sending in jackals from the CIA to kill Venezuelan rulers? Really? Either Trump got a lobotomy or he really does have a microchip. I'm kind of thinking that bold soldier for Christ is right. Explosive – well, I, kind of, I always have thought he was right. Explosives rise uh, in teens seeking sex change. Rock Sweden. It's now up to 1,900 percent. Youch. 
Russian army mag claims existence of super soldiers with telepathic powers for future wars. Boy, okay, for real, this is nothing new. Super soldiers? <laughs> it's like all that. As I was saying earlier, which I never finished the thought, um, in the 420 articles, and it would take you an awful long, and there's an index if you want to dig, dig for it. It's on the main page if you look very, very carefully. There's an index of articles that I wrote, and they were all written in between, like, you don't know, 2008, 2009, I think it was, 2010, 2011. And you can go through them, and th th every single thing that everybody's chattering about, oh, no, CERN, oh, no, uh, you know, three days of darkness, oh, no, uh, MK Ultra, 5G, oh, no, this, oh, no, that, all these new uh, upticks in, in – Excuse me, YouTube videos and all these people flipping out and oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I wrote articles back ten years ago about that stuff. It, but that's okay. If one more person gets awakened in time, praise Jesus, Hallelujah. We got to be patient. Maduro, Maduro places troops on high alert, accuses the United States of rehearsing a new form of warfare in Venezuela. No, it ain't new for us, man. We're Babylon the Great. This is old hat for us. You better watch out, buddy. All right, war hysteria. India rejects Pakistan's claim of an imminent attack as preposterous. Um, study World War II. <laughs> study World War II. Yeah. Right about the time that they say peace and safety. Look, World War II, peace and safety. It was exactly the same thing. The way World War II kicked off, it was like peace and safety, peace and safety, peace and safety. Hitler signed an agreement of peace and safety with everybody. Next thing you know, Blitzkrieg. <laughs> Imagine what it'll be like when it's nuclear missiles. Hmm? Wow. Changes everything, doesn't it? We have so many, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to go a little bit further. I believe at this time, praise Jesus, although I haven't looked, uh, that Sister Carol is on hold. Hang in there for us, Sister Carol. I want to blow through uh, uh, some of the signs in the sun and the moon and star seas roaring stuff because it's so, so important. Uh, and it's only going to take me about five more minutes to, to hammer these out. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Let's go ahead and do these. Freaky! <laughs> CNN, another bomb cyclone is hitting the Rockies. Now, remember what is happening in the middle, uh, in the middle of the America, in, in the farm belt, in the farm belt, okay? In gigantic, humongous silos. I mean, by the bazillions of tons and tons and tons of corn and wheat and all this stuff that they feed cattle with and, and feed, feed the world's, you know, the breadbasket of the world is underwater with floods and dams on, about to break and all this stuff. And guess what? What's in this headline? This is just fresh off the press. Another bomb cyclone is hitting the Rockies and the plains with blizzard conditions. Guess what? The company that I work for, based in Denver. Guess what? <laughs> Close the office early because of a blizzard coming in. Yeah. Wow, there's wildfires down in Kentucky. Amazing stuff, folks. But nobody, what is it? What could it be? <sighs> Listen to this. Areas paralyzed by blizzards and floods last month are getting ready for a second round of bomb cyclones. Second unusual inland bombogenesis in less than a month. What is, I, I was like, who made up this word bombogenesis? I was like, come on, please. And I actually looked it up. Believe it or not, it's a real word. They actually use this term to describe the stuff that is happening right now. <sighs> yeah. I got, well, I guess they got to make up new words because, I mean, stuff like this has never happened before. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Also, Tim Foster 405 YouTube channel, Tim Foster. 405, one word. Boy, does he have some cool stuff. that We've had him on the show before. Uh, play, praise God for his work for the Lord. And uh, boy, oh boy, he's really snatching up some incredible Planet X images out there, some stuff that will just make your hair stand up, which like, is some of my favorite stuff. Because all the other weird stuff, the devil can get in there and dork with it if it's all, you know, because he's a prince of the air on the earth. But the stuff out in outer space, you can believe God is in control 100% of that. I should control the other stuff, too. But he does allow the devil to do stuff on the earth in places that are cursed and where he has lifted, lifted his hand as a protection from. All right. Iran warns mass evacuations amidst flooding and ha heavy showers. 400,000 people affected. 70 people were killed. 36% of the country I mentioned earlier. Hallelujah. 
New thermal area discovered at Yellowstone supervolcano has grown within the last two decades and shows an unusual uptick in activity at Yellowstone and around. Hmm. I'm feeling very Charlie Frost-like lately. I think I'm going to buy a Winnebago. Hmm. The Big Wobble, 2019 set to be a record year for flooding as mind-boggling statistics blow away previous records for many countries, and we are only in April. <laughs> yeah, amen. Heavy rain, severe storms to hit central U.S. today. Yes, and it is. It includes tornadoes, storms, thunderstorms, wildfires, and blizzards all at the same time. It's worse than that movie, uh, you know, well, not worse, but not yet, but almost worse than the movie, A Day After Tomorrow. A, a total of 12 major quakes, magnitude 6 or higher, in the month of March alone. 12 recorded around the Pacific Ring. Praise Jesus. Let's talk about food shortages. U.S. green bids collapse under catastrophic Iowa floods. Amen. And it's going to get worse. Rare natural, this is a headline, rare natural disaster declared as giant forest fire kills at least two, injures 35, and triggers 4,200 evacuations in where? South Korea. This stuff is happening all over the world. Rescuers struggle to reach storms. Folks, just today, with my um, disaster alert app on my Android, I got, I think it was like six global apocalyptic flood alerts just today alone. Yeah. Headline, rescuers struggle to reach storm hit area in Nepal, 21 dead. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Rio de Janeiro floods. South America, South America. Toll climbs to 10. Folks, state of emergency declared. I mean, these are, these are, this is not small potato stuff. This is some huge stuff. Papa got the pedal, Papa got the pedal, blowing its stack every single day, every single day. You know what? I'll tell you what, folks. Now, it seems like not two or three days goes by that somebody doesn't email me and go, look, look, Papa got a pedal. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yep. Stay tuned. John Popo. Food crisis, hailstorm smashes, four million avocados. Sister Mary Lee right now is grabbing her heart and falling off of her chair. That's she feeds off of avocados. She has some, I don't know what kind of, she's got some kind of freaky deaky, you know, planet, planet pop dart DNA. I don't know, I don't think she should, she could survive on earth if it wasn't for avocados. I have an avocado tree out in my front yard. I don't think it's going to survive, Mary Lee. CNN, Alaska hit 70 degrees, the earliest ever, and more records highs, more recorded high, record highs are expected. Amen. Praise God. And the times are worse than they appear, as always. For it is not peace and safety. It is not peace and safety. But you know what? You're probably thinking I'm leading into playing the peace and safety bit. But instead, in honor of Sister Carol coming on the show, and the passing of my puppy dog, who I love very, very much, Jazz, I'm going to play Are We There Yet by Bongo Bear and Jazz. Yo, Bongo Bear and Jazz, Caribbean Funkadelic Band. And the name of this tune is Are We There Yet? Are we there yet? Yo, yo. Are we there yet? Don't eat the Wero, Jez. Are we there yet? Are we there yet, man? Are we there yet? I'm saying, I'm saying, are we there That's what I'm saying. I don't think we're there yet. What's up with that? Praise God. And my new puppy, her name is Hannah, named after uh, um, uh, uh, Samuel's mom, Hannah, in the Old Testament, the prophet lady. Um, her name is Hannah, and it's amazing how similar she is. Uh, to jazz, uh, it's amazing. It's really amazing, and um, and uh, except that she's a very rare black and white colored uh, uh, little girl boxer. And um, what's really fascinating, uh, amongst like 50 billion other things, is she. Um, well, uh, while I was playing this, she was hearing jazz. 
<laughs> she almost started to chime in. I know that look that she gets on her face when her tongue sticks out, and she's about to start going, woof, 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 woof. This one here is a talker. As a matter of fact, this one here is the biggest talker boxer I have ever had. Boxers are generally quiet dogs, but, but Hannah is noisy, and she bounces like a rabbit. She bounces like a rabbit. She goes, woof, woof, woof. Imagine a, a lateral movement you know, where, where, a, where the dog is going into the air and moving to the left and then to the right and then to the left and then to the right and then to the left and then to the right. And she goes, woof, 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 and bounce back and forth and back and forth and woof, woof. And I'm like, I, I can't even believe I'm seeing it. And then, of course, I whip out my high speed. I just got a brand new Galaxy S10 Plus because I need one for work and everything, and my S7 was absolutely dying. And I was like, and I, I, I got everything set on lightning speed and I'm, i've got to get this on film and the second i whip out my s10 she stops it's like woof 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 i grab my f10 and woof woof woof, woof. And i'm like dag nab it and then i just have to look at her and go tell her she can kiss that grant <laughs> but that's all right one of these times i'm gonna get her praise jesus and on that note let's go ahead and see if we can find sister carol on the call docs oh and there she is praise jesus let's go ahead and bring her live this is going to be a fascinating show, folks. Praise God. We need a little cheering up these days. Here we go. Sister Carol, are you there? I'm here, John. Praise God. Glad to have you. First time we ever actually talked. We've uh, had a lot of emails going back and forth over the years, and um, but never actually talked on the phone before. But um, welcome. You know, welcome to the program. Um, you were uh, – and just as a kind of a brief introduction, Carol um, – and now keep me honest. Carol is a, a, is a retired veterinarian, and um, of course – you would imagine that a veterinarian would have a special love for animals. Well, Carol's love for animals is like, well, I've never, I won't say that I've never met anybody that loved animals quite as much as Carol, because I actually know two people that are, I don't know, to me, it seems psychotic. To me, the, the depth of the love that they have for animals is just, well, it's not normal. It's not normal. It's not normal. It's just wrong. Wow. What? It's not normal. This is disturbing. But you know what? I dig it because I think – here's my theory, my hypothesis. And by the way, I rescued a little birdie that had fallen out. Um, one of my friends who's in the United Kingdom was talking to me over a voiceover IP phone call. Said you need to take the puppies out out to out to go to the bathroom in the backyard. You know, take them potty. So I, I was like, okay, okay, I'll take them out again because I got to take them out a lot. And I and I was like, okay, and I brought them out. And then it was like supernatural because there was a bird in my pool that was like stuck in the water and couldn't get out. And so I used the net and got the birdie out of the pool. But um, yeah, I know I know a, a handful of people, and I think it's like a, some kind of a special gift from the Lord. That there are people on the earth, because I know that we're going to rule and reign with Jesus, right? And I and I know that we're going to have different assignments over creation, right? So it, to me, it just makes sense that Jesus would have crafted us and given us each different characteristics and attributes that would follow us into our eternal destiny. And therein lies, I think, the mystery of how some people, such as yourself, Carol, are just absolutely to what folks like me. I love animals. I love them. But I, I, I'm, I'm blown away by what I've seen from other people, such as yourself, such as Sister Haley out in the United Kingdom, uh, such as Mary Lee. Uh, you know, the, the folks that I'm referring to. Their love for animals is on a whole, whole nother re dimension than, than, than what I have the ability to comprehend. And you're one of those folks. And, um, and because of that, that has led you to, well, seek the Lord um, through various means. And, um, and there were some absolutely mind-blowing revelations that were shared with you. And, um, you know, I know that you want to, you know, keep – things on the down low and keep people anonymous and stuff by their request because they're shy, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I'm just going to go ahead and turn the mic over to you, 
and let you go ahead as you feel led by the Holy Spirit to share whatever revelations you feel led to share with the people. This is on a whole nother level of understanding. This is like, like I said earlier, how the book of Jubilees mentions that, uh, that the animals were talking with the people in Hebrew. They're having conversations back and forth. This is on that level, and it's even bigger than that. Praise God. And on that note, I'm just going to grab myself a little virtual folding chair and sit in the back, hand you the mic, and let you just go ahead and share some of these revelations with the listeners of the show as you feel led. Okay? Praise God. Okay. And you jump in anytime you want to add in to the comments that I make. So I'll Amen. start off. I'll start off by saying. Um, one of the scriptures I want to use is 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 and 10. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him, but God has revealed it to us by his spirit. And there are some things about animals that God has revealed uh, because I'm one of those crazy, nutty, abnormal people John was just talking about who love animals sort of in a unbalanced way at times. And God took mercy on me. And well said. Me. Well yeah. said. Unbalanced was an excellent choice of words. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> well, the first thing I'll, I'll uh, share with everybody is a vision that my husband had. And my husband isn't unbalanced. He's the most level-headed person I know. He's a Vietnam vet, uh, lost all of his friends in Vietnam. He came within an inch of dying in Vietnam and was miraculously spared. But he had a vision in 1999 of two of our animals uh, in heaven. Uh, Our elderly cat had died during the night of heart failure, and praise God, He was one of my animals that I did not have to do euthanasia on. He passed on his own. God took him without me intervening as a veterinarian. And this was a Saturday night. The next morning, my husband and I were in church and were standing, singing during praise and worship. And I didn't know this at the time, but after church, my husband, George, told me, that while we were all singing, uh, the platform uh, where the musicians were, it disappeared. And George was looking at a garden. And in this garden, our little cat was sitting there on a path in the garden. And then George saw our dog who had passed a few years previously, our dog Gabriel, coming from the left up a connecting pathway And he came up to our cat, licked our cat on the top of his head, like they often did on earth, and then they walked off down the path together. And then George said he just, he saw like curtains closing on the vision, and everybody was back on the platform in the church, and everyone was still singing the worship song, and he had seen two of our animals in heaven together. So that was a great blessing back in 1999. But because I'm a veterinarian and because I had to do many, many, many euthanasia procedures on many patients over the years, I started going into like a burnout or a compassion fatigue, and it kind of uh, escalated uh, when I lost my heart dog, Fred, in 2006. Even though God had given my husband this vision of our previous animals, uh, I wanted more. Imbalanced (laughs) Carol needed more. It's like, Father, I can't deal with, you know, the loss of Fred, even though you've shown me that they go to heaven. So I was being really um, demanding and petulant. And... um, God was very gracious to me because I was so broken in all seriousness. I, I was just heartbroken not only because I I had lost my dog who was like my child, but I had done 
the procedure, the euthanasia procedure, and that kind of just was very taxing on me emotionally. So a few months into this grieving process, um, people in the area, some of the people who were close to me, they knew that I was having a difficult time, and a stranger who I didn't know at the time, uh, she was praying for me. And uh, she actually had a vision of my dog, Fred, being lifted up into heaven, and she said she could tell he was a big dog because the hands were spread wide apart. And she didn't know that at the time when Fred had passed, I was lying over his body, crying, praying, and asking our father to please send angels to carry Fred to heaven. So months later, when the stranger came up to me and told me that, I was, you know, very awed that somebody who didn't even know me or Fred, that God had shown this to her. So that was the beginning of my friendship with um, this wonderful woman who has a ministry in the Word of Knowledge in her church, and it's been 13 years now, and she has had a number of different visions or has been allowed to hear my animals in heaven. And she's very uncomfortable with this because to her it's too similar to the account in First Samuel about Saul and the witch of Endor. And I, I guess I would like to make a disclaimer at this point that what I'm going to share with people, I would never want anybody to ever seek this out on their own. Never go to an animal communicator. Never go to psychics. God in his mercy allowed my friend to have these glimpses of my animals, maybe to share with people at this time in history when the things are getting so dark in the world. It's just my thought, my wondering, that maybe it's one of the little gifts that Jesus is giving to his bride while we're here waiting, that he's giving us this uh, little glimpse about our animals because so much, so many of us love our animals so dearly. I mean, God put that in us, even if some of us get a little bit Im- imbalanced, <laughs> like like I've told John before. But in all seriousness, so so many of us love our animals, and they give us a glimpse of God's unconditional love for us. And I think it's that that part of their nature that is still. Um, untainted by the fallen world. It gives us a glimpse of heaven, that unconditional love that God has placed in them. Um, So when we lose that unconditional love, it's a great blow to to us, like you've sadly had to experience with Jez passing on to heaven recently. Um, So for all of uh, that, I I believe that God has given this information to me, not only to console me, but for consolation for all the other um, people in the body who love animals like I do and have gone through grief over losing their animals. And um, it's really cool that you mentioned Zen bringing up Jubilee uh, because it's it's very specific in Jubilee 328. It clearly says that the animals had the gift of language before the fall and they talked with the humans. So the first and maybe the only Dr. Doolittle and um, we're all going to get to experience that when we get to heaven. So that's really exciting to me and the verse in Revelation 21.5, he who sits on the throne says, Behold, I make all things new. I believe that the animal kingdom is included in that. All things is all things. 
and the animal kingdom is going to be restored, and it's going to be beyond our wildest hopes. Uh, my brother is, is often pointing out that he believes that every molecule that has died in this fallen world, that God's going to redeem it. Every animal, not just our pets, um, but they're all going to be there because God's not going to leave one scrap for the enemy to gloat over, that God's going to restore everything. Uh, Aaron, uh, Ale Shire, I'm not sure if I'm saying her last name correctly, uh, from Sparrow Cloud, she's even had um, dreams where she's seen uh, trees that were at her childhood home here on earth, and she's seen them in heaven. Uh, and, of course, she has a lot of animal um, encounters in those dreams that she's given also. So that's very, very much a blessing to me. Uh, so I guess what I'll, I'll do now is start telling you some of the other things that God has allowed my friend to hear or see about my animals uh, in heaven. She's never seen anybody else's animals. Uh, she's never heard anything about anybody else's animals. It's just me. I'm the thorn in her flesh. <laughs> she's like, oh, Father, please don't make me hear anything else about Carol's animals, okay? It's too weird. <laughs> so... Um, the next thing that I could tell you about that I think your ears are really going to perk up about when I mention this is uh, my friend has seen my dog at windows in heaven where they go to look down to see what's happening with their human family that's still on earth. And when my friend was telling me this, I'm, I'm going, oh, 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 I know about this. Johnny Baptist talks about this. You know, this, this, this is like a, like a portal area, and that's what I call it now. She didn't know what I was talking about. She said, well, it's just an area that has, like, these viewing windows. And she has seen my dog Fred there on a number of occasions over the past 13 years when she's praying for me. Or sometimes the thought will just come in her mind and she will see this picture of him at the portal area looking down onto earth and sort of checking up on me. Um, it's interesting to me, too, that Hope at the Call of the Bride, she has a friend, Charlene, uh, whose visions are posted at the Call of the Bride. And Charlene's visions are always uh, happening around, I think she calls it the viewing area in heaven. She goes to heaven and she sees these viewing windows and it sounds very familiar, very similar to what my friend has seen, you know, my dog going to uh, and looking down and watching me. And my girlfriend was just shocked by this because she didn't know anything like this existed in heaven or that there was any way any human or animal would have any kind of ability to see what's happening here on earth. But apparently, between Charlene's visions and the things my friend has been shown, animals and people go to the portal area often to check in with uh, events going on on the earth or with their loved ones uh, to see what they're doing. My friend was also shown that um, Fred is the only animal of mine that is still very connected to the earth. And he goes to the portal area often to, I guess, to, to check in on my husband and myself uh, or to see what we're doing. I'm not sure if he can see what we're doing or if he can hear us. I, I'm not really clear about that, and neither is my girlfriend. But he goes there often where the rest of my animals who have passed on in the 
13 years since Fred has passed, they're all content to just be enjoying heaven and just waiting for us without having to go how we're doing. And that fits Fred's personality because he was very much uh, a worrier. A If he was a human and he was a female, he would have been one of these doting mothers that never let their children out of their sight. I guess that's how I was with him. I was a doting mom that never let my dog child out of my sight. Uh, so he would have been the same. Uh, I corrupted him probably. <laughs> so, and then another thing that you may find of great interest, at least my friend and I found it interesting, uh, my friend heard at one point that Fred was told well done when he got to heaven, that he had done his job well on earth. Neither me or my friend had known that animals have job assignments, but apparently some animals are given jobs to do on earth. And then just recently in the past year, uh, my friend heard Fred again, and she's rolling her eyes and going, really, please, Father, <laughs> do I have to hear Carol's dog um, saying things again, but Fred was given an award for valor, and he wanted me to know because he was very proud of this award, and he wanted me to also know that when I get to heaven, I can't smother him because he has other jobs to do and he can't be with me all the time. <laughs> so he doesn't want me to cramp his style when I get to heaven. <laughs> I thought Don would find that very funny, and a lot of you probably do too. So now my friend also saw the throne room one time. And you got to realize that these visions are happening very sporadically in between her ministering to many, many people and walking in the word of knowledge and a prophetic gift she will maybe be allowed to see something about one of my animals maybe once a year. So it, it, when I'm reading these off, it's not like this is something that happens all the time. And my friend and I have never thought it out. We would never do that. We would never, like, try to contact our animals or any human who has passed on, I mean, that's forbidden. That's very clear in, you know, First Samuel that you don't do that. And that's why my friend is so uncomfortable because she doesn't really, she doesn't engage in conversation. She really doesn't want to know anything that's going on with anybody who has passed on. But for whatever reason, God has used her to reveal this information to me, perhaps so that I could be at peace and resolve the issues once and for all instead of always walking in sadness about the loss of animals in my life, whether they be my own animals or my patients. Uh, so another time, my friend was shown the throne room. And she was really surprised to find out that Fred had been to the throne room several times. And my friend was allowed to know that some animals are given access to the throne room. She didn't know what the parameters are, which animals, and why some animals are allowed there. But she said Fred is one of them that has been there a number of times. And then it's interesting to me, after she told me that, I was reading the book titled Heaven by Randy Alcorn. And he states in that book that in the Greek, the uh, word for living creatures in the throne room in Revelation, that word is zoon, Z-O-O-N, which means animals. But they didn't want to 
translate it as animals, so they use the term living creatures. So there are apparently animals in the throne room, and some of them are, are pets from time to time anyway. So another time, my friend was allowed to see and hear Fred in heaven making a joke. And John, you're going to probably really love this or you're going to roll your eyes or both. But when Fred was here on earth, he loved blueberries. He loved really any kind of berries. When we'd walk in the woods, um, he'd always go wandering off to chomp on berries wherever he could find them. And him and my husband would go off and they'd, you know, pick a berry bush clean in just a few minutes. So my friend had no idea that Fred loved blueberries. Uh, but she saw Fred in heaven sitting in a heap of blueberries and he was stuffing them in his mouth. And she heard Fred saying, tell my mom I'm in hog heaven and then he was snorting like a pig. So he was so proud of himself that he was making this pun. And my friend said he was acting like a seven-year-old human child. And she was just shaking her head and rolling her eyes and saying, I can't be your friend anymore because this is just too weird. <laughs> so you can take it for what it's worth, but I think that it gives an example of God's humor and the humor that he's infused into much of his creation, not just the human creation, but even the animal creation, because we see animals doing a lot of funny, goofy stuff here on earth, and apparently they also have a comedic uh, bent in heaven, at least. Some of them do. In my friend, he was a, I, I could see him doing that because he was always trying to be a goofball. So another, uh, another time I can tell you about happened just a couple years ago. Um, another one of my dogs, his name was Cliff. He passed two years ago. And Fred and Cliff never knew each other here on the earth. But my friend was praying for me after Cliff had passed uh, because I was grieving. I was really, you know, very bummed that my, my boy had passed. And my friend saw Fred and Cliff together at the portal area. And this one's going to be really hard for some people to accept, but I'm, I feel led to share this, this encounter with you. I, I, picked in, I picked through all the different ones, and this is one of the ones I really felt like I was supposed to share, that it would hopefully bless many people, even if it's a little hard to wrap your brain around. But anyway, my, Fred, my friend saw Fred and Cliff together at the portal area, and they wanted my friend to write me a letter uh, because they were so concerned about me because I was so grief-struck. I was so sad after Cliff had passed. And Cliff, my friend heard Cliff say that it was his decision to go to heaven that he had been shown a glimpse of heaven while he was going through the agony. Uh, he had bone cancer in his pelvis. It was exceedingly painful. And, the, you know, painkillers just weren't addressing the degree of pain. And he was kind of a wimpy dog anyway. He didn't do well with any kind of pain. So he had a very difficult uh, time while he was sick. Uh, so he apparently had been given a glimpse of heaven during those weeks. He wanted to go home. And my friend heard Cliff say, we aren't dumb. We can make choices too. And it's very interesting to me that the morning that I did the euthanasia procedure on Cliff, 
my husband had taken him outside, and he was just in so much distress. He was in so much pain. He couldn't sit down. He couldn't find a comfortable position. He was whimpering all the time. And my husband asked Cliff, do you want to go home and be with Jesus? And my husband said that Cliff just looked at him and turned around and headed back in the house. And he came up to me, and I just knew, because we had a strong connection, I just knew he was looking at me and saying, Mom, it's time. I can't endure this anymore. So it was very interesting to me. My friend didn't know any of that, that she heard Cliff say that he had made the choice, and he had made the choice. He came to my husband and I and told us, it's time for me to go to heaven. And that was two years ago in, in January of 2017. So apparently our dogs and cats want to write letters sometimes when they're in heaven too. At least Cliff and Fred did. And then another of my animals that my friend was allowed to see was Sophie. Sophie was Fred's sister. Uh, the first eight years of Sophie's life, she lived with with Fred. Um, and then when Fred passed, we got Cliff. And then for the remaining seven years of Sophie's life, she had Cliff in her household. And both of these male dogs were very alpha dogs, very domineering, dominant over the other animals in the household. And um, they weren't abusive to Sophie, but they were the ones in charge, and she followed them. And apparently, uh, Sophie has now found herself, her own person, and she's free of the dominion of the two boys that they had over her on Earth. Uh, I never knew that she was, I mean, she seemed to love the dogs. It's not that, th that she had a horrible life, but I guess she just didn't like them bossing her around. So now she loves to sunbathe, and she blows bubbles in the water in heaven. And my friend had never known Sophie, and my friend didn't know that something Sophie loved to do when she was a puppy here on Earth was blow bubbles in the water. So to me, that was a huge confirmation that, you know, definitely God was allowing my friend to hear what Sophie was thinking and what Sophie was doing. Um, there, there's, a, there's quite a few other times that I could share with everybody, but I also wanted to talk about um, spiritual warfare and praying a little bit because my friend and I, my friend who has seen all these different visions about my animals, my friend was praying with me this past autumn for our remaining dog, Sydney. Uh, Sydney, almost 14 years old, and last autumn she got really sick. And uh, we weren't really sure what was wrong. It was a very complicated illness. Uh, we finally got to the bottom of it, mainly through prayer. Uh, veterinary in intervention was very much secondary. Uh, but my friend was so faithful to me and to my girl, Sydney, uh, praying with me for Sydney pretty much every day, sometimes numerous times in a day. I would place the phone beside Sid with the speaker on, and my friend and I would pray in the spirit. We would pray in tongues over Sid, and my friend would be given, given words of knowledge, even about medical steps that I should take uh, to intervene in Sid's medical care. Uh, one example of that 
is that my friend heard while we were praying the name of a specific antibiotic. And my friend said, well, I'm not a vet, but what does this word mean? And when I told her it was an antibiotic, she said, well, I think, you know, God's showing this to me. The Holy Spirit's telling me the name of this medicine, and you should consider using it. Well, I had to take a big leap of faith to use that medication because there were many contraindications. And in the natural, that's an antibiotic I never would have picked for Sydney because it's contraindicated if an animal has nervous system problems, immune system problems, and liver issues, and she had all three of those. So for me to put her on that medicine was solely a God thing, where I had to say, Father, I believe that you showed us while we were praying the direction I should take with Sid, and during the night, dear Holy Spirit, you showed me where in my emergency stash of medicines I have this medication on hand in my basement, because I'm retired now, so I don't have a clinic anymore, but I have a lot of stuff that I have on hand. So I began Sydney on this antibiotic, and three days later, my colleagues called because they had the culture results, and I told them, I said, well, you know, gals, I started Sid on this other antibiotic, and they're like, totally shocked, and they're like, are you out of your mind? Why would you do that? <laughs> and I told them, because of prayer, I was shown that I should start sit on this medication, and the culture results verified that that indeed was an antibiotic that would work on the infection that Sid was battling. So my colleagues were just absolutely in awe of God showing me that medical information ahead of the culture results. And then one night during this crisis illness, while I was laying awake praying over Sid, praying in the spirit over her, I heard the instructions to rebuke a devouring spirit, which I did. And then the next day, my friend called and she said, we have to pray for Sid. We have to do warfare for Sid. You know, God is telling me this is really important. We can't put it off. And while we were praying, he saw a type of demonic entity chewing on the side of Sid's face. And this entity looked like a prehistoric warthog. And my friend was just floored to know that spiritual warfare can happen not just with our human loved ones and our, the humans in our family, but the enemy also attacks our animals in our family uh, through whatever openings, and we have to do warfare to and covering, prayer covering over our animals as well. My friend also uh, had heard the word necrosis, and at this point she hadn't even seen Sid. This is all done praying by phone. And she asked, what does this word mean? What necrosis? I don't know what this is. And I told my friend, I said, well, that's what's happening to Sid's face. She has like a, a flesh-eating bacteria that is literally eating the side of her face away and causing her face to slough off. It was, it was very traumatic uh, for Sydney most of all and for me and my husband. It was a very nasty illness. Um, God healed her. She is with us now. She is miraculously restored from this horrible illness. But I know if my friend and I hadn't done spiritual warfare over Sid day after day after day, like John tells us so often, you know, you don't just pray once, but it's persistent prayer. 
Sydney would not have survived, you know, this illness, that this attack from the enemy. But God did bring her through, and I'm grateful to him every single day that I still have Sydney here on the earth with me. And another thing that my friend heard when we were praying for Sydney one time, which is going to, I hope it's going to bless many of you, he heard while we were praying that Sydney knows Jesus and sings songs to Jesus in her spirit. And that blessed me so much, and it brings me to Revelation 5.13. Let's see, I, I can read that one to you word for word. Uh, Revelation 5.13, And then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, and they sang blessings and honor and glory and power belong to the one sitting on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. And it just awed me that that verse says that the creatures sang, and you know it's not just human creatures because they also include the creatures under the sea, and I don't think there's any humans living. Well, maybe there's humans. Yeah, if I talk to John, he'll say, yeah, there are humans living under the sea and in various labs and dumbs, but but that was uh, just very awesome to me also that uh, in the midst of this illness that Sydney went through that uh, Jesus was being sung to. Sid was singing songs to Jesus even when she was so terrified and so scared in this illness that you know she was fighting through. So that's, that's uh, a lot of them. I, I can keep going and I can tell you some more, but I just uh, I don't want to hog the whole chat. I, I, I was looking forward to t actually talking with you, and I don't know if you're, you're thinking I'm loonier than you did before we started talking or what you have to think about this. Thoughts no. you want to share with me? No, no. The whole reason I brought you on the program was because I I was hoping that you would share, you know, whatever you felt led to share. Um, but I, you know, I don't really. I mean, I'm I I have no. I I totally agree that that we're going to have our minds shattered in heaven. We're going to be completely blown away. I've read a lot of books, a lot of books. Um, not not every single one in their entirety, or else I'd, that's all I would do, and I'd have no job. But um, that have talked about things along this line, different parts of it, um, and it's amazing. It's beyond our comprehension. Um, just the testimony of Odin Hetrick is mind blowing. Sitting in, you know, he he, he sat in a uh, some kind of a dining room conference room in a mansion with a bunch of people around a table Jesus is in the room with him with them sitting around the table talking to him to them and somehow he knew that Jesus was also at other conference rooms as well at different places different mansions and he had asked about it and I guess, I don't know if it was Jesus or an angel or whatever told him, well, Jesus is omnipotent. He can be all, all sorts of different places at the same time. And it was like, Odin was like, oh, yeah, okay. But then while he was sitting at the table, they were passing, whoever, was passing around, um, I don't know, maybe some kind of a butler or something, who knows, but was passing around a silver platter of food, some kind of, he said they were incredible, unbelievably delicious hors d'oeuvres of some type. And he said literally when he, he was just blown away that people would reach over and pull an hors d'oeuvre off the silver tray and, and another one would just like appear right in its place. And um, 
but but here's the thing. So it, so the, you know, a thinking person would look at would listen to that testimony and say, well, that sounds kind of like you know Alice in Wonderland. It's kind of like you know everything's magical. Okay, fine. But but see, here's the thing that's really really amazing about it all, is that you eat the food, and it's just like even better than like eating the food here on earth. So the senses and sight, taste, sound, all those things were completely, you know, accustomed to, you know, the eating of the food, the sensation, the deliciousness, the wow, I want another one. But that but but the but the supernatural part about it just another one just appearing right there was just part of the normalcy of being in heaven. And he looks over his shoulders and he hears music. He says, I hear, I heard beautiful music. Just, he was just gushing about how gloriously awesome this music was that he was hearing. And he said he saw this little group of creatures. They were like nothing that he had ever seen before. He didn't say it was a group of raccoons or he didn't say it was a group of this or that. He he, he said it was a group of creatures. He had never seen anything like them before. And they were playing the music in the corner of the room. I mean, this sounds like something out of a Star Wars movie to me. You know, yeah. and like kind of, you know what I'm saying? And so when I hear these stories that you're – conveying from these, you know, the words of knowledge and visions that people were given on, you know, on your behalf, um, to me, it's kind of like nothing surprises me at this point. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just like, I, I just, uh, it's mind blowing. It's like, wow, my mouth hangs open. And, you know, and there have been a few things that you've told me that were like way out there. But, you know, it's like, I, I never had a check in my spirit. I never had a feeling like, oh, no way. That's ridiculous. That never even entered my mind because I believe that what we're going to experience is so far beyond just based on my own personal research, based on the the books that I've read. If you haven't read Intramuros, My Dream of Heaven by Rebecca Springer, it's you're going to cry. You will cry. The book uh, um, um, Flight to Heaven. Dale Black, we had him on the show two times. The first time he was on the show, he cried when he tried to explain what he saw, and I cried when I was trying to read from his book. Because he, And then people were like barking at me and saying, let him say it, let him explain it. He couldn't even talk. He was bawling so hard on the radio show. So I read the section of the book to save the show. And um uh and he was very he said he was very grateful. Thank you for reading that. Um because because he was crying, he couldn't get it out of his mouth. Th- there are things that are so supernatural, so otherworldly, so beyond Walt Disney. I mean, you know, in the spirit of, uh, you know, uh, the the whole animal life coming to life thing that we're hearing Carol share a little bit about, there are things that are so mind blowing, mind blowing boggling, unbelievable, you know, and then and then you just get these teeny weeny little taste of it from like the Book of Jubilees, and I guess there's probably other, I'm sure there's other ones out there. There's hundreds of books that were written, uh, and and I and and I haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg on the books written by people who were taken to heaven and spent an extensive period of time there. I've, there are many other ones. Jesus and a little white kitten. He loves little white kittens. I, I find that fascinating because Zen Garcia has this incredible affinity for little white kittens. They're, they're, uh, Angora, he likes this furry particular breed of little white kittens. And he's got a lot of them. And um, Jesus, there was a lady who was taken to heaven, and Jesus was driving around in a Model T Ford. And he and he had with him in a Model T Ford a little white kitten, and she he, and she was crying and she was like awed by everything that she was seeing. And she she Jesus said, "Do you want to get in the car with me?" And they went for a ride in this Model T Ford, and and um, 
And the first thing she said was, Jesus, what, why are you driving in a Model T Ford? And Jesus looked at her and smiled and chuckled, and he goes, because I like it. And she goes, Jesus, can, can I can I hold your can I can I can I hold your kitty? Can it? He said, "You can hold my kitty, but you can't have my kitty. This is my kitty. <laughs> it was his kitty. He had a little white kitty, and it was his very own kitty. And I'm like, oh my gosh! And you know, and at first, you know, when you're when you're a baby, relatively new Christian to the testimonies of the people that were taken to heaven." And you haven't read any books, and it's all like a whole new thing to you, and you've never heard any of this stuff. When you start hearing about it, you are you go into a state of, like I don't know, denial or whatever. You're just like, oh, come on. And then, you know, little by little, if you keep a contrite spirit, the Lord opens your heart, shares a little bit more, a little bit more. I've had to do this with every extremely advanced concept that people would, you know, traditionally say, oh, he's a he's a heretic, he's a looney tune, he's a walking payday bar, that guy. He's going to end up in hell for saying the things that he says. And it's like, I never accepted any of the stuff that uh, the really advanced stuff that I share with people. In the beginning, I didn't at all. I've called people names. When Zen Garcia first called me on the phone, I was working at a company called Gerdauer Maristil. I was in a dark. I hid myself away. I was at work. It was over lunch break, and I hid myself away in a um, conference room, turned the light off. Didn't want nobody to know I was in there. And I was talking to this strange radio show host named Zen Garcia. I didn't know who he was. I mean, I just knew he did radio show. And he was telling me stuff, and I was like, this guy is a raving lunatic. I thought he was crazy, and now he's like one of my best buddies. I mean, it's like, but the thing is, God has to wean us from the ignorance of churchianity into understanding the glory and the magnitude. I see Jesus everywhere. My sister said that to me one time. She pointed to a Christmas tree while everybody, of course, you know, is like, Christmas is of the devil, Christmas trees. And they point to the story, you know, the, the, the scripture that is misunderstood in Jeremiah and trying to tell everybody that. That's something. And, and, you know, um, my sister walked up to, she's one of the most incredible Christians that I have ever known, dedicated her whole life to pregnant women who had no place to turn, beaten, kicked out of their homes. She would give them homes send them to school, educate them, clothe them, feed them, keep them for sometimes eight to ten years, and then send them out into life as absolute G- – take care of their babies and fill them with Jesus. And one Christ- – and, and at the time, at the time I was like very anti-Christmas, you know, because it's Sol Invictus, and the Pope comes out and he waves to the Pleiades, and we've all been tricked. We've all been tricked. Never mind that our Father is called the Father of Lights. Never mind that the entire universe looks like a giant twinkling Christmas tree. We go out there and we tell everybody, oh, Christmas is all of the devil. But yet we do no homework. We read a couple of lousy books written by ex-illuminists. And we think they're like the gospel truth, but they're not. We don't even see scriptures in the Bible that are amazing like for Titus 1, verse 15, I share this with people, and they just about fall off their chairs. Titus 1, verse 15 says, To the pure, all things are pure. To those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. And even their mind and conscience are defiled. They profess to know God. But in works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. We're very opinionated and very prideful. I I studied about – there's people out there that say they rave about the six-pointed star. I have a book by a man with a doctorate's degree. He was a Jewish man who wrote uh, – his, his last name is Graham, and it's entitled The Six-Pointed Star. And he points out very adamantly with great research that the star of David is of the devil. It is the star of Baal. 
I read the whole book. He was right. But what he didn't know was that that same star was also seen by some people that I know that were taken to heaven. The problem is we don't know what came first. The true architect of the universe is Jesus Christ. And the devil steals everything from God, everything from God, and twists it, contorts it, and makes it of the devil so that the Christians cannot receive it as a blessing. Titus 1.15 To the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. My sister walked up to her Christmas tree one, one Christmas. I remember it like it was yesterday. And I knew that God spoke to me through a bunch of different ways, through coincidences, through emails, through facial expressions, through billboards, through unusual phone calls at the doggondest of times from the most amazing people. I knew God spoke to me uh, sometimes over years to convince me to let go of something that I thought had to be true, but it wasn't. And I, I, have, I have let it all go. Let it all go. I remember the day that my sister Marilyn, for no reason at all, it, I wasn't sitting there going, well, so-and-so says that Christmas trees are of the devil. I never did any of that. Never. And I was just standing there in her living room one Christmas, and she walks over unprompted. This is how I knew it was the Lord speaking to her. And she waves her hands at her Christmas tree from top to bottom, and she says, You know, Johnny, I see Jesus everywhere. And here I am talking about it on the air five, six, seven years later and realizing, wow, you know, I watched Mary Poppins return. Now, granted, she there's a scene in there where she goes to visit her sister, Mary Poppins or whatever. And, and there's definitely some, uh, you know, satanic undertones in that particular scene. But when I watch all that magical stuff happening on there, I see Jesus everywhere. I know that the things that we, the, 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 because the devil, he, he urinates on every branch of every tree, on everything that is on this earth because he's the prince of the air, and he is doing every doggone thing he can to dork things up for us from receiving the blessing and being motivated appropriately to practice righteousness and holiness, to turn away from sin, and to praise God in our difficult times as we're commanded to. If we, if we understood how huge all this is, how, and you know what? There are people out there that will rebuke me. Oh, he used the word magical. He should have used the word supernatural. You know what? What's the difference? At the end of the day, okay, I'll use the word supernatural. How about that? Does it make you feel better? But I'm telling you, folks, there are things in heaven that will blow you away. There are things in the universe of being. Trillions of life forms, multiple parallel universes, that if you make it and receive appropriate amount of rewards as part of the Bride of Christ, you will see someday. That is, if there is a such thing as a day, because on the planet of Venus, it takes 265 Earth days for that planet to rotate once. Yet we all think we know so much, don't we? We don't know anything. First Corinthians 8, 2. If anyone thinks they know anything, they know nothing yet, as they ought to know. Our God is so awesome. And if anyone thinks that Walt Disney's imagination was greater than our Father's sanctified awesomeness, they got another thing coming. God is going to blow our minds. And you know what? Based upon that scripture that you quoted, Carol, at the very beginning of the show, yeah, we haven't the even first... seen the things that he has for us. The, these testimonies are not, that's, that they aren't all encompassing. They're not comprehensive. These are teeny weeny little peaks at God's awesomeness because I have not seen nor ear heard. 
And that includes Amen. the ones that are in heaven. Amen. So praise God. I'm glad. That, is there anything else that you feel led to share in the last uh, few minutes of the program? Or do you want to just go ahead and close with a prayer? It's up to you. I mean, don't feel obligated to stretch on. If, if, you, know, if, if, you, if you want to close with a prayer now, that's cool, too. Whatever you feel led to do. I have a couple other things I can share that may bless the, the family of, of God that's listening. The one thing I wanted to make sure and say is, you know, I didn't want people to be looking to heaven for their animals. You know, this is one facet of the awesomeness of our Father and our Lord Jesus. I wanted to make sure that I was able to tell people, focus on Jesus. Fall more in love with Jesus. Every day, every moment, he's our king and he's the ultimate prize. Where Paul says, press on, keep fighting the fight. No matter how dark it gets in this world, God will give us different glimpses of his love and his mercy and his heaven that's waiting for us. But never let go of Jesus. You know, it's going to be awesome to go to heaven and see all the fabulous things that God has waiting for us that we can't even can't comprehend, let alone getting to see our human loved ones and our, our animals that we love. But the main thing that we have to look forward to is our Jesus, who died for us, who made it possible for us to go to heaven, and to be redeemed back to God. So never lose sight of Jesus. And if the things that God allowed my friend to see about my animals, if it brings one person to a closer connection with Jesus, then it's all worth it over the 13 years. God will do that. He will show somebody these little glimpses if he knows that it will reach that one person that might be listening to John's radio program and say, wow, I don't want to miss out on a God that is that awesome. I really should investigate this and consider looking into who Jesus is, who he says he is, and finding out if he really is the God of all the universes. And if he is, I better bow to him and give my life to him. And I wanted to make sure that everybody knew that as much as I'm grateful to God for these glimpses he's given me about my animals in heaven, I'm most grateful to God about Jesus. I'm most grateful that Jesus died for me so that I can go to heaven to be with him forever. And you were talking about, you know, your sister seeing Jesus in everything. Well, a couple summers ago, I mean, I, I listened to a lot of praise and worship music, but I listened to some secular music, too. And a lot of times when we're outside for the day, I'll put in some of my favorite secular music for part of the day, and Neil Diamond happens to be one of them. I'm a lot older than you, John, and um, one day... In this summer, I was uh, singing Neil Diamond's song, Play Me, to Jesus. And it's it's a love song. Yes, it's a secular love song. It's gorgeous. I love it. And I love Neil Diamond. And, you know, and I've had somebody, somebody was uh, staying in my house and they, um, you know, I'm not going to, you know, but they're Christian and all that. And they were like, I heard you were listening to some secular music. You know, you're not really supposed to listen to anything that doesn't give glory to God. And I'm like, I didn't say nothing, but I just wanted to whack him upside the head. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, so let's see. I got to take, I got to get rid of all my classical music, all of my jazz. I mean, for crying out loud. Then there's so many people don't even realize how amazingly moving the, um, like the Billy Joel song about uh, Saigon, you know, it, it's like, and they prayed for to Jesus Christ with all the their might. Da, da, da. I mean, you know what? I see Jesus everywhere. My father was a musician. My father 
My father traveled with the Glenn Miller Orchestra. He was part of the Glenn Miller Orchestra as a pianist and a trombonist. You know, but a lot of people they just they're stuck in a rut. They can't see Jesus everywhere. They see the devil everywhere. I don't. I see God well, when everywhere. I was, when I was singing this song to Jesus, and I was even kind of dancing around a little bit. I mean, not, you know, kind of twirling around and just kind of like on the grass and just like, I love you, Jesus. You are the sun. I am the moon. Play me. Well, a couple weeks later, I went to this very same friend's house the friend that had all these different visions of my animals. And we were praying for different people, and we just get together sometimes, and we don't know what we're going to pray about. We're just led by the Holy Spirit. And while we were praying for some people, she looks at me and she goes, why is God calling you a loon? (laughs) And she goes, no, no, it's Luna. And he's saying you're his little Luna. And and I said, oh, well, Luna is moon. And then I had to tell her the whole thing, how I was singing to Jesus that he's the sun and I'm the moon. And that's how intricate our God is, that even when we sing secular songs to him in love and worship, he receives it and he I, he's glorified by it. Yep, there's scripture. There's scriptures in Malachi. For example, I think it's like Malachi three sixteen. Um, here, I'll, I'll, we'll we'll close the show on this, and then you can close with a prayer. But the, we just don't get it. We really don't get it. We're so busy looking for reasons to blame somebody and call them names, and we don't understand Romans fourteen to save our lives. Um, but check this out. I love this. I've shared this with a lot of people. A lot of people know it, and a lot of people don't. And the ones that don't know it, when they hear it, they're like, wow, that is so cool. Malachi 3.16. And by the way, before I even read this, if you all had any idea how many times, I, I don't sleep well a lot of times because I'm under a lot of stress from my job. And I wake up in the middle of the night and I just have a conversation with God. I want to read, you, read this to you. Malachi 3.16. Then those who feared the Lord spoke often to another, one another. And the Lord listened and he heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who feared the Lord and who meditated upon his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On that day, I will make them my jewels and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. Actually broke out a special book of remembrance just because people were thinking on him and talking about him and awed by him. Praise his holy name. Would you go ahead and close with a prayer tonight for us, Carol? Certainly, John. And I thank you so much for having me on the program. It's been a blessing, and I hope what I've shared is a blessing to others. So, Father, this night, we thank you for this time we've had together. I thank you for the revelation that you've given us, these little glimpses of the animals in heaven, that they are your animal, that you loan to us. And you love the animals even more than we do. They're your creation. And, Father, we thank you for sharing them with us. And, Father, I ask now that you would bless John in every area of his life, bless his household, bless his animals, everyone listening. We pray a blessing over them, their households, including their animals, Father, that you would use this to have people pause and recognize how truly encompassing your love is for each of us. And that encompassing love even trickles down or floods down 
over our animals also and the animals of your creation that aren't even associated with a human. We just thank you for all your blessings. And we brought up Neil Diamond and Billy Joel, and I pray for their salvation, Father. You know, I do that every time I hear their songs, a lot of secular songs. When I, when I hear the songs, I pray for the musicians, Father. And I ask you this night specifically, I pray for the salvation of Neil Diamond and Billy Joel, Father. And I thank you for working in their lives and their hearts. And now, Father, we just commit this program to you. We commit this night to you. We thank you for this time that we've had to spend together and share about your glorious creation and a little glimpse of what is in store for those of us who love you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for all your mercies and all your grace and all your blessings to us, Father. We love you so very much. We ask these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much, Sister Carol. Awesome testimony. Awesome information. We have no idea. Like I said, just a closing thought, a sanctified thought from, let's just call it part of my sanctified imagination. But if my estimation is correct, like I said earlier, Walt Disney's got nothing on our Heavenly Father. Praise His holy name. God bless you all for joining us tonight. We will see you at the Friday Night Prayer Vigil, 8 p.m. Eastern. Lord willing.